Lynch is drunk at a Paul McCartney concert right now, so if you were expecting a better intro joke, you'll have to let it be. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a church got a mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. I love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That's right. Handball, Brian. Daddy, stop talking. Oh, yeah. It's the kid's uh, 16th birthday oh. today. Watch out, LA motorists. That's right. In about five months. <laughs> yeah. There's quite a contrast in the uh, birthday gift wish department. Oh, what do we got? Well, Natalie wants a convertible Mercedes. (laughs) And uh, that old thing? Sonny, I asked last night, uh, what do you want? And he said, I don't know. And then I said, well, you know, you got to have something, right? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) And then I said, "Uh, well, don't you want something? And he went, well, I did go to Disneyland last week, so. I guess that'll count. I guess that'll count. Oh. I know. It's crazy. It's a crazy thing. Now, wow. it is a combination of a uh, demeanor and a kind of metronome and a kind of a, you know, like I said, different dogs. Some mm-hmm. are kind of laid back. Others jump around and mm-hmm. yap a little more. You know, there's different wiring, different people. I would argue <laughs> Natalia's normal that you want stuff. Sure. And uh, Sonny's abnormal, but in a in an easy-to-raise kind of way. But it's also a product of he's just walking out of the hometown buffet, and I'm selling candy bars. <laughs> that's and he's, true. He's waving his hand going, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, no, I'm good. That's and then, true. And then I go, well, how about you take the candy bar for free? And he goes, mm, I'm full. I'm okay. Because... <laughs> Too much jumbo shrimp. Yeah. Well, you and me and and everyone else, when it came to the birthday, had our eye on the prize. There's stuff you wanted. You didn't, the the notion of getting stuff mid-year was unthinkable. It wasn't even a question. Why would you even bother asking for it? It was always like, you know, if I said uh, to my dad, I'd like one of those Chinese finger traps. (laughs) For 89 cents, he'd go, well, your birthday's coming yeah, up right. in yep. four months. So That's what I was going to say. It's yeah. either, well, your birthday's coming up or Hanukkah's coming up, yes. but it's not. Well, you use your own mental math, right? Like whether it's something you wanted, you're like, oh, birthday's coming up in three months. Yep. Right. Well, I that better be, that's it. That's yeah. my window. <laughs> Something's coming up or I better start mowing lawns or washing cars or whatever. The mid-season of my birthday is the end of May. And then, of course, there's Christmas. So I'm like... I got I broke it in half. Yeah. That's which, pretty good actually. Which is good when you're coming, you know, when the Corollas are in charge of the purse strings. Right. That's a that's a good thing. But it still meant a wait from yeah. one to the next. But there was no mid season right. anything. I, I don't think there was a, a board game or a, there, you know, or much less. Forget about a trip to Disneyland or uh, any of that stuff. Right. It was all carved out yeah. for birthdays. But anyway, he wants nothing. And uh, has no no thoughts about driving. Zero thoughts about driving himself. That adds up. Checks out. Yeah, I mean, that the, the profile fits. Yeah. And also, as we previously discussed, he's not escaping anything. It's not like... Um, For, yeah, sweet freedom right. from my <laughs> multiple video game platforms. Yes, I grew up... Uh, in home theater. My house was uh, <laughs> the one that Chick grew up in Forrest Gump. Oh, Jenny. Okay. Yeah. Jenny. Sometimes there are enough rocks. I grew up in Jenny's house, so I want to get the fuck out of there <laughs> immediately. Make me a bird so Is I can it? fly far, far away. That's what I wanted to do. Like, give me my learner's permit so I can get the fuck out of, blow this taco stand. But uh, no, I got all the pool, air conditioning, and square footage they need. So where are we with the Mercedes convertible? So good point of information, good news. They st- MSRP starts at 54K. God damn. I look forward to Natalia being the newest employee <laughs> of uh, any number of Corolla pr- properties <laughs> and leasing wow. her a car. Right now, uh, uh, the pitch is, is how a convertible is safer than a hard top. Oh, do tell. Oh, I'd yeah. love to hear this. I'm Less curious. to scrape on very, very, very low overhangs. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I find that a little dubious, but the, the new modern convertibles are are safe because they a have for those, effort, man. They have those uh, as we as we talked about. They have 
the pop-up roll bars. Right, sure. So just like they have the airbags that deploy in a millisecond, they have the rollover mm. bars that wow. pop up out of, the, out of the back. Or yeah, spring-loaded. Yeah, I don't know. Emmy can check on, on that and we'll maybe find some slow motion footage of it. But when you're seeing a car going down the street, like a modern day yeah. car, and it looks like just a plain old convertible, yeah. and you think to yourself, geez, that thing ever capsizes. Someone's getting decapitated. Mm-hmm. The only thing holding it up is the windshield. Right. No, it, it has it has two roll bars okay. in the back, that uh, hoops that will pop up. It'll I deploy. I, I don't know if it's a federal law. I don't know if a every car has one. I don't think a Miata has one, but a uh, a Mercedes will. Does this pop? I wouldn't be opposed to having Natalia come in and do sort of a Shark Tank pitch, and mm-hmm. and letting us kind of you know be the arbiter because yeah. she's very convinced. I told you when she was eight, she was. Th- an inch away from me calling my program director to say I couldn't come in the next day because she wanted me to stay in Vegas. Yeah, she's exquisitely convincing in, in an incredible, incredible way, works many angles, and should definitely go right from high school to Garagos' mm-hmm. agency. Yeah, uh, which is a possibility. She could, she can make a case yeah. like I've never seen. Uh, let's see, video of a car accident in Venice. Oh, boy. Hmm. Um, we have these to be the roll bar. Oh, this or is no, like an accident video no. Video. This is another. This is another accident. The the Venice. I'm I'm guessing unless we have two accidents in Venice from 2021. This is a video that Gary verified for me, and we watched it with the ramp truck at the end. Yeah. All right. This has nothing to do with the pop up roll bar, but you you will see side impact skirts deploy on the car as well. Okay. Uh, so we're right in the middle of this. Um, Crazy recall, Gascon. Am I getting his name right? Gascon. Gascon. I keep thinking of Gaston, the Disney character. But anyway, Gascon. Very so different man. We had this real liberal DA and uh, crimes kind of spiraling out of control, and now we want to recall him. And this is going on in San Francisco as well, and in some other cities where they get these DAs. They're pretty liberal. They're into rehabilitation. They don't like coming down too hard on the juveniles and things like that. And then what happens is his crime starts spiraling. I mean, everyone's down with the idea. Like, yeah, let's thin out the prison herd. And why should this 16-year-old go in the joint and all that? Everyone's kind of down with the notion of it. It's kind of the same as, well, we're, we're going to defund the police and we're going to have some community policing yeah, in there. It's like, everyone goes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no, that sounds good. And then 10 minutes later, people are getting shot everywhere and they go, fuck it, we need more police. This is kind of our relationship with more liberal cities and who's applying the law. We go, yeah, yeah, no, like that. Yeah, what he said. And then we go, a couple of people get shot in Beverly Hills and we go, fuck that. We got to lock these criminals up. So the video is a video of a minor. I think he was 16 at the time. This has caused a kerfuffle because this guy, there was a woman and she was pushing a stroller. Yeah, yeah. With an yeah. eight month yeah. old. Oh, dear. In, in, it's in, as bad as you think. In an alley. I think this is every mother's nightmare. Truly. Truly. Because usually when we do that, we're talking about the heartbreak of psoriasis. <laughs> but this is you walking your stroller against a, literally to your right is a 40 foot by eight foot tall block wall. You're just up against a block wall, there's no curb. There's, you're just cutting through an alley, but you're just, safely. You're pushing down an alley. Yeah, Venice is all a lot of alleys and stuff. And a guy just aims his car at you and starts accelerating. And the mom, God bless the mom. She, well, we'll we'll show you the clip. And then God bless the hero in the Ram pickup. There's just the car's just aiming at her, and it just oh, just Jesus. runs her and her stroller over. I can let her pop up, Jesus Christ! She's right over the window. That's a that's a mom. Wow. And then he continues. Now, a guy in a ram truck, God bless him, has seen this and literally this yeah. rams the guy into wow. a telephone pole. And that's how they, they caught the guy. But the, the footage is that a minor? Yeah. The guy was, the woman is just walking. The car's coming from way down the alley and it starts it's training up. itself yeah. on her. And she's like, I, I have nowhere to go. And at some point, he just runs her over. Wow. Uh, now, of course, this guy gets the slap on the wrist and the five months at the juvenile camp and whatever. And it's like, 
Uh, listen, case by case, people. I'm all for rehab, but if you think it's a good idea to point your car at a mom pushing a stroller Jesus and then Christ. gun it, I don't know how much rehab there is for that mine. This guy, he I was, can't get over how the mom just popped up. Yeah, she was Adrenaline. obliterated by a car yeah. going probably 25, 30 miles an hour in an alley. He just popped up and went over to her kid. Yeah, she, the kid was 16 at a time. I, you know, I want to do that show called What the Hell Happened, mm-hmm. where I talk to the parents and mm-hmm. go, really? Like, yeah. like, really? Like, yeah. I, listen, I got all the room in the world for the chick at the uh, Kager and passed out and your son grabbed a titty. I don't, I don't want to glorify it. <laughs> but I understand. But I'm not going to judge. I, I, there's a lot of kind of crime stuff that has some basis in something. This is multiple Your failures. Your son the aimed a level. car at a stroller yeah. and accelerated. Yeah. What? We got we got no what, use for you. What could you have done to this? How? I don't know how you would even raise someone. No, multiple at, failures. Capable of that. This kid's in the 10th grade. He thought this was a good use of his time. And then, I don't know, what he, he didn't know the person who was pushing the stroller. He didn't Dude, know the no. baby. He just... Aimed his car at a rando person in the middle of the day. It was just walking their kid in a stroller. Best case scenario, it was joyriding and lost control of the car, but that's that's not a good scenario. I was going to say, and I use the term best case scenario very loosely, but I wonder if the if if they'll say, Your Honor, he had uh, taken a, an immense amount of acid. The He thought the mom was a demon. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? He was on probation at the oh, time. Or not. Oh, boy. Which is like... Also, everyone with your probation, <laughs> the idea is stay out of trouble. Exactly. Yeah. That's and then, what it means. And then once in a while, if you're making uh, you know, a Denzel Washington movie, the kid who's on probation hops in a car and they go for a joyride. Next thing you know, everyone runs out and robs a liquor store and he's sitting in the back seat. He doesn't know what's going on. He gets railroaded. But he doesn't steer the car to no. stroller. No. You're on probation. So he was on probation he was convicted for a felony of poisoning a teenage girl's drink in 2019 in his Palmdale High School. We don't need this kid. I, How do you get from Palmdale, Venice? I don't know. Oh, like oh, yes. oh, it was in a stolen car. I think he was in a Jesus. he was in a stolen car. Anyway, there's, there's, we have no evidence that this behavior is going to stop. Yes, yeah, so at this point, it's a pattern. Yes. Oh anyway, he uh, he got sentenced to five months at oh. a juvenile probation. Is camp. he okay? So, <laughs> I'm sure they'll turn all around. So we can look forward to him being out. Anyway, uh, Gascon is now they're they're pissed. So for Cal- for Southern Californians, the next time you go into a grocery store, because they are out there at the Ralphs and at the Gelsons, and people want you to sign the recall, consider it. Consider it. All right. So there was uh, that piece of info. Now there's not the grocery stores I go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the West Side Whole Foods. All over the valley. <laughs> now we're looking at a, the Mercedes rolls over and has to pop out uh, roll bars. I guess uh, I guess they I guess they do. They um, oh, in the back there. Yeah, in the back. Let's see. They just pop oh, up. They're like two little pipes, essentially. They'll keep it from yeah, it's your a, head. It's a, yeah, yeah, and it'll if if I said if I I don't know why they. They do it when the car hasn't rolled over, but before it rolls over, or if it rolls over. But uh, yeah, on they, impact, it'll go. They up. pop out. Mm-hmm. Damn. Well, there's Italia. Technology <laughs> is uh, technology is fucking crazy, isn't it? It is. I mean, all this stuff, air airbag deploys, roll bars pop up, all all done in a millisecond. And we talk about overregulation for good reason. I'm okay with this regulation. Yeah. I'm okay with the car having to be super safe. Oh, that's I fine. I don't even know if there is. Because I don't think a, a Mazda Miata has this, although maybe. I don't mean this specifically. I just mean engineering cars to like a certain. You talk about you've talked. Yeah, about this I, like I, twenty I, years ago, it wasn't what it is now. The oh no, yeah, but you got a question. Also, a lot of it is self-imposed. Like I don't know if the government said you must have this. Uh, Mercedes could have said this is a feature of right. our safety and our. Oh, car. just to this keep is, up with whatever, or the... to innovate, or to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want a car? You're buying a car for your teenage daughter. Let me tell you mm-hmm. all right. the all the safety, safety this thing has. I mean, that was always kind of Volvo's business model. It was Bobo. always Bobo's business model was we make right. a safe car right. before before it was regulated. Was that uh, thing we just watched, was that European by chance? 
Well, the car Be- is. Did, but, uh, okay, because there was a, a car seat with a baby. Oh, dummy, the baby was smoking. But the ba- the yeah, baby, but the baby yeah. was behind the. No, driver. you're right because a lot of European yeah. babies smoke, <laughs> and, right. and, no, and you don't think it factors in. But you want right. the arm in a certain idea. place when the airbag deploys. A lot of the European baby babies said, have, the, have the cigarette pushed right. into their mouth. Right. That's yes. what I was wondering. Um, also, in the in the in the car world, it's kind of funny. Um, Jim Farley, who I've talked about, who runs Ford Motor Company. Yes, that Farley. That Farley, cousin of Chris Farley, looks, I think cousin, looks exactly like him. Uh, the sort of sober version of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's doing a hell of a job over at Ford. A nicest guy in the world, and I, I see him at the track all the time because he's hardcore, and he brings his Ford Cobra out there and his Mustang, and he races all the time. Um, but... He and the new Ford Lightning is coming out. That's the all-electric Ford F-150 pickup truck, okay. and that's the one you could power your house yeah. by. Oh, which, right. With all the rolling blackouts yeah. coming down the pike. Not sounds, bad to have your driveway. The, the generator, sounds, driving generator. But the other thing you could charge with it, and uh, Ford, oh, well, there's uh, there's me and Farley yeah. at the track. The uh, other super, super just friendly guy the clown princes of car racing that's That's right right. (laughs) the the other thing you could do is you could charge another electric car yeah with your ford lightning and what they're doing he's kind of trolling uh elon and tesla because he when you buy the lightning it has the charge cord but it comes with an adapter so you can charge a tesla wow nice now i don't know if there's any real world application to that like a tesla by the side of the road but and there's good sh- optics yeah there's a household show- that has a tesla and a, and a lightning yeah and there there's plenty of those i mean there there shall be probably plenty of those the dad's driving yeah. the lightning the mom is driving the tesla or vice versa But you could now charge, and they're showing an electric Ford EV Mustang. They're calling it. It doesn't look like a Mustang. Being charged by the Ford F-150 Lightning, but the adapter means you could charge (laughs) the Tesla. So theoretically, somebody ran out of battery, you could pull over by the side of the road in your Lightning and give them a charge. It's, it's, uh, again, I think it's it's kind of a eh, dig a little bit, but it's also... um, you know, it's nice to see companies kind of go, no, we're going to do it right. People want electric cars. We're going to make electric cars. Yeah. You know, we're going to we're going to innovate. We're going to focus. Uh, Ford is, you know, when I was, you know, in the mid 80s, Ford was, I mean, beside the truck line, mm-hmm. Ford, you wouldn't really bought a Ford in the late 70s yeah. or the early 80s. They didn't. They didn't have weird cars, Cadillacs now, kind of that way. It's like a, pre-Ford Taurus. Yeah, it's 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 kind of... The Explorer kind of turns it around for them, I guess. Oh, yeah. Really, I about that. You know, it's kind of nice just to see legacy companies just kind of go, all right, we're going to get our shit together. Mm-hmm. We'll change a little direction here, and we'll take care of it. All right. Uh, we got the Rotten Tomatoes game to play here in the first uh, half of the show. Well, in honor of Chris and his lovely bride's honeymoon, this week's Rotten Tomatoes game takes us to the country of love, Italy. Mm. And as Adam would say, if he spoke in Italiano, faccia molo. Get it on. Yeah. Yeah. Our first film makes us an offer we can't refuse. Starring Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, James Caan, Robert Duvall, and Diane Keaton, directed by Francis Ford Coppola from 1972. The Godfather. Some of this does take place in Italy. <clears throat> it, it, well, Sicily. We took... Uh, and Tuscany, I guess. Sonny, uh, after seeing uh, Top Gun, uh, added it to his 113 long list of movies, of r- rankings that he has seen oh, that wow. he keeps in his phone. It's a young, bald Brian. I got to see this. <laughs> I mean, this he, list. I think he has Godfather 2 up higher than Godfather. Well, that's wrong, but I'll talk to the boy. <laughs> I don't, I can't say for sure. I think at number one, he's got, he and I are so simpatico on No Country for Old Men. We it's just great movie. love it. We just, I love every part of that movie. It's fantastic. As much as you love Javier Bardem, you're, you're waiting for Tommy Lee Jones to hit the screen again. Mm-hmm. And, 
and it's just it's so damn good that movie and that it takes place in a weird non-time like 1980 right i mean it's not the 50s it's not modern day times woody harrelson's maybe the fourth or fifth build and he's fantastic Mm. fan fucking tastic in that movie but uh it's got a lot of tarantino movies up there as well but um all right, so... Godfather 2 being better than Godfather 1 is a popular take. It is, however, wrong. I do not know, <laughs> and you I... Know, you wouldn't know. I gotta say, I'm I'm barely familiar with 1 or 2. What? How? I know. I've seen them a thousand times. I went... When they re-released this earlier this year in January or February for like a week in like the Dolby Cinema, mm-hmm. like the premium mm-hmm. format, I made a point to go see it because I did. love this movie so much. A couple years ago at the Dolby Theater in uh, the LA oh, okay. Live, we, we went to see it with the full orchestra, which Ooh. was also oh, awesome. Oh, wow. That was great. All right. I never do this. Oh. Yep. But, but 100. Yep. I went just below that 98. I went just in the middle at 99. Oh, boy. The Godfather is certified fresh at 97. Oh, oh boy. How is that possible? Who didn't like it? Siskel Niebert. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Tom Hanks plays a symbologist who works with oh, a God. nuclear physicist to solve a murder and prevent a terrorist attack against the Vatican. When this movie came out, all they could do was talk about his haircut, and I miss those days. Directed by Ron Howard from 2009, Angels and Demons. Oh, this is the sequel. Oh, this oh. isn't the... Div- okay. Didn't everybody just unanimously shit on this? Yes. This got piled on a little bit it because was- the first one got really good reviews. It was kind of standard boilerplate uh, thriller or suspense, whatever mystery. And I think they, they took their revenge on this one. Mm. Yeah, so it's hard to tell. Like, could have this... Could this have been a 63, but everyone just kind of piled on? Yeah. I, no I feel like there was some piling on, but how much piling on? Hanks is always good. But Paul, Be- you ever see this movie? I've never seen Paul it. Bettany plays like a religious um, fanatic who's flagellating himself literally with like a um, cat, cat, of nine cat of nine tails or a scourge like the entire movie. Sweet. Now it's very it. unpleasant to watch. All right. What did the critics say? Say, I think there was some punishment here. I went 37. Mm. A little higher, 48. 47. Angels and Demons is rotten at 37. Oh, oh shit. shit. What did you say? 37. Oh, nice. Look at you. <laughs> I want my preamble with we have a five point deduction, right, Dawson. Right. My five, I, I left interested. it to surprise that time. Mm hmm. All right. Surprise to you or surprise <laughs> to the audience? Yes, yes, you, you are correct, sir. <laughs> okay. You left it. A series of stories following a week in the life of a philandering tabloid journalist living in Rome. That's what this movie is about. It's directed by the legendary Italian director Federico Fellini from 1960. La Dolce Vita. Oh, yeah. I know nothing mm, about love that Ricky Martin song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a guy who looks like James Dean who's in this, but I don't think it's James Dean. Michael. It is not no, James it's, Dean. It's, I don't know who it is. Hold on. James Dean made three movies and died. Yep, the same one of them. But boy, does that poster look like James Dean. Marcello Mastromini. Mastro- Mastromi? Mastromi? Well, Pastrami. Pastrami. whatever it is. And the very gorgeous Anita Ekberg. This is Fellini. Did we figure out? Yes. So don't don't they just like these movies? And they maybe if we don't even they even know what they're about. And they're referenced in pop culture, whether you've seen them or not. Yeah, it's yeah. Ashamed to have not seen this. Yeah. I have no idea if this is supposed to be good, but I'm I'm working the angle that the critics may not have known if it was good either, but they just <laughs> went, "It's European. It's Fellini. I don't want to seem like a square or an ugly American." Okay. So with that. Okay. I give it 77. Oh, fortune favors the bald. 100. Oh, wow. boy. 83. Mm. La Dolce Vita is certified fresh at 96. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a classic. And the people have it at 90. So I guess it was. But good. the only people who've seen this are uh, hard film nerds. Yeah. For this film, Fiat was a major sponsor of the movie. Fiat offered to supply Fiat 500s as getaway cars. <laughs> 
But they use Mini Coopers to retain, uh, to, uh, to ensure the British flavor of the movie. Starring oh. Michael Caine from 1969, mm-hmm. The Italian Job. Never saw the original. Yeah, the remake was fun. The remake was awesome. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun, uh, Edward Norton played a great heavy in that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, never saw the, never saw the original. No, me neither. I don't know anything about the premise of this movie. or the It's movie. a heist film. Yeah, I assume that, but I don't know. I think it's just iconic, but that doesn't mean it was good. It's just we know what it is. But it's sexy. Yes, it's sexy and it's iconic. And maybe for some of the reasons previously stated about the last movie, Chris is just going to go, yeah, it was good because Mm -hmm. it's European and it's iconic and it's got a good name. Michael Caine with, uh, who's that? Noel Coward. No Coward. Wait, what? Who? It says Noel Coward. Noel Coward. Did he write it? He was in it? That's, That's confusing. We'll try to figure out what okay. Noel was uh, doing in this thing. All right. Uh, now. I'm draw- I have no idea. I have no idea. Classic. All right. I'm going to turn in a lazy 77. A little higher at 86. 87. Mm, the Italian job is certified fresh at 81%. Mm, okay. We got okay. a game here, people. Finally, in this film, Johnny Depp is trying to mend a broken heart. When he crosses paths in Italy with an extraordinary woman, not Amber Heard, but Angelina Jolie, which leads to a dangerous game of cat and mouse. Golden Globe nominated. It also stars Paul Bettany and Timothy Dalton. From 2010, The Tourist. Mm. I can't believe we didn't do Talented Mr. Ripley. The whole Mm. thing's in Italy. Don't know. Brian, did you see it? No. No? (laughs) We got a close game here, people. Uh, Gina? Yeah. What? Did you see it? No. <laughs> I don't never Did anyone heard of it. see it. No. This this was um I'll I'll tell you it wasn't a celebrated film. It was nominated for a Golden Globe Poss you guys have to look this up. Best uh, motion picture. Yeah, best motion picture comedy, I think. Oh. But why was it nominated? Because it was European and they like that, the Golden Globes? Why would they nominate it? Suppose <laughs> Frank and get the this sense. uh this um, brought about a lot of questions of the integrity of the nominating committee oh. of the uh, Golden Globes. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Okay. Ricky Gervais, I believe, had a lot of fun with this one uh, as the host. Right. All right. All right. Uh, look, if we're separated, it's uh, you know, it could be by less than five or six points either mm. way. So this is going to make Ooh. or break us. Um, no one was ever told to see this film. I don't think it was... Um, you know, celebrated, but it's got two mega stars yeah. in it. Nominated for Best Picture. Okay, and, uh, nominated <laughs> for Best gloves. Picture. And, uh, you know, it takes place in Venice, it looks like, and a lot of good scenery, a lot of eye candy. Mm-hmm. Could it just could it just snuck in with the low, low 60s? We'll find out. But what is it? All right. I am going to say 43. <laughs> oh, 40. I had 43 and changed it because of all Brian's snickering and smugness to 33. Mm. Yeah, I remember when he got nominated, the joke was like, the, tu- the Tourist is not a good movie. What is that? What's going on? The Tourist is rotten at 20. Oh, oh. goody. Oh, man. A close game. Sweet. Close game. Oh, the people seem to enjoy it a little bit more. 42. 42. It translated the language barrier. <laughs> Transcended, yep. as it were. All right. Sorry, guys. I, mean, I need you guys to score for the Italian job. There was some chatter in the background. Uh, I think I had 86. I had 87. Adam had oh, 77. I think I just went with 77. My, I went with that twice. I think it was 77. Thank you. All right. Now the calculations oh. take oh, place. The computer, yeah. The mouse is spinning the wheel. <laughs> this is. I uh, really don't know. I mean, I don't. how much did your five-point deduction help you? Uh, well... It was worth five points, but then the next one was the fucking Fellini film, and, <laughs> and I was off by 20 on, on Fellini, and I think that's what kind of, that could have cooked my goose, mm. but we shall, uh, we shall see. I think every okay. point counts here. Yeah. The tabulations are in. Probably all separated by 10 or 12. Oh, boy. Adam Carolla. Yes? You are firmly on the podium with a score of... 45. Oh, wow. Mm. 
Gina Grad. Mm -hmm. You made the podium as well, but barely. Your score, also 45. Oh, wow. That's bad, though. That's bad, though. (laughs) Break off. Bald Brian. Oh, here we go. Say 44 Adam, you or needed lower. one more five-point deduction. Brian wins at 40. Yeah. Oh, Bill. Oh, man. That was a great game. That was a good game. That's the first time we've all been separate of five points. Or yeah. been more close to that. All right. Let me tell you about Bonner Wines. Well, who likes to drink once in a while? We do. And you want to make it 10 times healthier? In Argentina, they make a dark red wine from Malbec grapes. <sighs> Grown at 9,000 feet. Yes, please. Yes, please. They've lab tested them and found they contain up to 10 times the levels of longevity and heart healthy nutrients called resveratrol. Oh, yeah. And also, on. 90%. Oh, l- no, keep go. going. 90 per- resveratrol. 90% less sugar, fewer chemicals, fewer awesome. additives. And uh, if you love a steak and a barbecue, well, this red wine is. Uh, actually makes the red meat even healthier. It is very tall. Notes of uh, blackberry, leather, cherry, and smoke. And today, Bonner Wine is giving you up to 50% off their best Malbecs and uh, plus 50% off on shipping. So just visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash Adam. Do it today. That is bonnerprivatewines.com slash Adam. It is very tall. All right, let's see. Anya Zova is an actress, is a comedian. She's an athlete as well. She's, um, I think she's Russian and uh, Serbian. Uh, we'll try Ukrainian. To Ukrainian, sorry. So we can get some insights from her, and we'll talk to her right after this. Anya is uh, an accomplished kickboxer as well. We can get into that. She actually came in first in the kickbo- Russian kickboxing championship, Damn. so she can kick some ass, tell some jokes. Good to see you, Anya. Um, good to see you too, Adam. Where are you right now? I am in Los Angeles in my house. Um, yes, live from LA. Uh, Anya's got uh, shows coming up by the way, at uh, Cobbs in San Francisco, which is a, a wonderful place. A lot of history there. Uh, that's June 15th and the 17th Punchline, Sacramento. And uh, portions of the ticket sales are going to the war in Ukraine. So let's talk about that. Um, what is your connection to uh, Ukraine? Well, my mother is Ukrainian, but I grew up in Russia, so all my life I considered myself Russian. Um, but when the war started, I had to make a choice. Who do I support? And I'm more aligned to Ukraine, and I think the war is a very wrong thing to do. The invading another country is wrong. And that's why I started the show, to support Ukraine and to promote peace. The, uh, I'd heard a story and I don't know if we can try to verify this, Emmy. I don't know if you guys heard anything, but I either there was a speculation about Putin being sick. We've talked, yeah, we ba- bandied that around. And, and a lot of it was like just sort of shot down. Mm-hmm. But I also heard that he was sick, it was real, and he came to the United States for treatment. What? At, at some point. And so maybe like they're... Ala- oh, sorry. Like Alaska, United States? Or like uh, to the Continental? Like yeah, Sloan I, Kettering said, come on down? I, I don't know. I just, I was listening to the radio. There was some talk. It sounded semi-credible. So I I don't know. Like, there's part of me that hopes he just dies a miserable and slow death. And then there's another part of me that's like, oh, if someone just gave the guy six months to live, why not just take out the world? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, he's mine for sure. What'd you say, Anya? Sorry, you're breaking up. He's sick in his mind, that's for sure. We cannot argue with that. Yeah, I also heard that uh, the sanctions weren't working very well, that the ruble was up and that he was dealing with China and mm-hmm. other players. You know, there's always some bad actor sure. willing to come in and buy some oil. Well, and speaking of the ruble, I just got a news alert that you know there are new cities popping up all over Ukraine that are now ruble only. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's a that's a scary sign. Yeah, I don't know if you heard any updates. I heard also recently that Russia had occupied about 20% of Ukraine. 
But that's the- correct. That's the Donbass and Mariupol area plus crime. Uh, so yeah, that's about 20%. And unfortunately, there are some people in Ukraine who are also brainwashed by Russian media. It's people from post USSR, and instead of watching European news, they watch Russian news. And there is a little percentage of Ukrainian who is also brainwashed and who wants to be part of Russia. What? So it's but they, very... But, but they know they're not Nazis who need to be liberated because they're there. Yeah, it's exactly. This is, doesn't make any sense to me. And their cities are destroyed by Russians. And there are still some, that's why like the cities with the rubles only, yeah, they got occupied by Russians by now. But there are, the media is huge. Wow. It's a propaganda huge over there. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't imagine getting your information from a Russian news outlet. I just, I mean, Pravda, Pravda translates into truth, I guess. <laughs> but that's how you kind of know. Mm, truth social, for <laughs> Like, example. I don't think Joe Biden lies about everything, but whenever he goes, true, man, this is yeah. true, I go, oh, now he's lying. Because <laughs> right. whenever he says something nutty and then backs it up with, this is true, true man. Story. True story. This is true. I go, oh, now he's lying. Yeah. yeah, and I feel the same way about Pravda. Uh, Emmy's not finding anything about him coming to the U.S., but reports are that he did undergo tran- cancer treatment in April, hmm. and there was a there was an assassination attempt as well, I guess. Although, um, you only disconnected hear, the IV. Yeah, you only hear about the ones that work. You know, when it comes to assassination <laughs> attempts. Sure. So you, yeah. go, how, where does comedy come in for you? Because you start off doing fitness and kickboxing and being very physical. How does comedy creep into your life? Yeah. Uh, I started as a professional kickboxer. I was in Russian national team for seven years. Then I moved to the States, got recruited by WWE professional wrestling organization, World Wrestling Entertainment, was with them for a year. And this is actually where I fall in love with acting, with stage, with performance. Uh, and after I got injured with WWE, I pursued acting full time and stand up comedy and transformed my experience as being an immigrant um, into comedy. Is, uh, I don't know, it, did kickboxing kind of go the way the dodos we say here in the States and that boxing was always a thing and then kickboxing kind of became a thing mm-hmm. and it was a little bit popular, Brian, uh, as, uh, as, uh, noted in the movie, say, say anything, anything. Yep. Lloyd Kickbox- Dobler, kickboxing, sport of the future, sport of the future, okay. but it was, a, it was a thing. They made a movie called mm-hmm. kickboxer. There was a, it was a thing. Yeah. And then MMA kind of slid in, and I guess they went, look, either there's boxing, if if you're traditional, and if you want the no-holds-barred shit, we got Mm -hmm. MMA, and then we got WWE if you want to get high and watch the TV set. (laughs) And maybe kickboxing fell off, but I don't know. It got absorbed into it, I imagine. Yeah, I think a lot of kickboxers probably went into mixed martial arts. You ever think about that, Anya? That's true. When I moved to this country, I noticed, like you said, there's either boxing or MMA. And I was leaning more towards boxing because my coach in Russia, he was actually a boxer who adopted kickboxing. So I'm pretty good at it. And it's Olympic females. Kickboxing is now Olympic sport. So I was leaning toward that. But then WWE happened. But I agree with you. It's now you have to choose. Is it classic boxing or MMA? Um, I'm more fan of boxing. For me, MMA, I, I'm a bad wrestler. I cannot see myself doing MMA, but boxing is something I could imagine. Well, as a fan who used to teach boxing as well, but not in Russia, uh, more the uh, old town Pasadena mm-hmm. area. Similar. The, the reason <laughs> I like mixed martial arts is in boxing, there's a lot of boring fights or sort of bad matchups or guys that are just trying to get a paycheck and not wanting to get hurt. And when you can see some pretty, even some super fights can be kind of boring. There's Floyd Mayweather fights where after the fight, he doesn't have a mark on him Mm -hmm. and they talk to him and he's like, well, we're going to go out and party. And then I'm playing in a (laughs) semi-professional basketball game. Like he doesn't seem that dinged up or worn out or anything in kickboxing. It could be two get men and now two women you've never even seen before and it's just like standing in front of a bar and seeing two chicks yeah. go at what it. Like it is, it is entertaining, even if the technique isn't isn't even there. But um, so for you, then when does when does stand up come in? Well, stand up came in about what four years ago. 
I was acting. I was pretty good at it. I got a few roles, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, MacGyver. But I always felt uncomfortable on stage with the mic. And I'm this type of a person that I like challenges. And if something gives me fear or uncomfort, I usually go that way. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me embrace myself and try to do stand-up comedy. And I loved it from the day one. I, I fell in love with it. It's You feel like a little bit more control versus your acting career because you're in charge of your own routine, your own st- stand-up sets. You can promote yourself. You can do your own shows. That's why I, I love it. I love doing it. Did you grow up, you're too young, but was Yakov Smirnov a big name for you when you were growing up as the only Russian stand-up comedian essentially I, on the planet? I'm so glad you brought him up. I love him, but in Russia, he was never famous. I guess the Russian media kind of blocked him uh, from like USSR channels. Canceled. So I learned about yeah, he was canceled. <laughs> he never made it there. Um, but I did learn about him once I moved here and actually met Yakov in Naples uh, at the comedy club of The Hook. I did a show there with Ahmed Ahmed. I was opening for him and Yakov showed up and uh, Ahmed put him on stage and I had a pleasure meeting him and Yakov killed. He did like five minutes set, hilarious, and we ended up talking after the show and He's fantastic. I was so happy when I met him in person. I was like, for me, it's like meeting Mike Tyson and Yakov. This is like the same two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike Tyson and Yakov would both be at the top of your yeah. list of people to meet. He is the sweetest, nicest, most thoughtful guy you have ever met. I have another pleasure. I have, he was here. Of, he God, must have been on. Ago? He's been on the show at some point. Ooh. I don't think it was. That recently. No, maybe not. Amy will but... look it up, but he is such a delight. No, Brian, just so you don't think you're going insane, he was maybe doing a one on one and we got to oh, chat with him in the hall. Okay, okay. I'm yeah. like, I don't remember talking to that guy at all. And more patriotic than any human being you'll ever see on MSNBC. Well, <laughs> like, when you own several homes country. in Branson, I would think so. Yes, he loves this goddamn country. Um, so for you, when you're, you want a challenge, kickboxing is you know, a challenge, scary. And when something is scary, you want to, you want to lean into it. And I, I get it. It's a good impulse. People think it's a bad impulse, but it's really a a good impulse. I've done that quite a bit in my life. And it, it always ends up being helpful at some point. Sometimes you have to get a little distance from Mm -hmm. the thing that you were scared of, but it does, it does end up, you end up having more well-rounded life. But so do you go, I'm going to start doing open mics or do you go, I'm going to take a class or I'm going to get a coach because you've been coached your whole life? I, I did all of the above. So I started doing open mics multiple times a night. I started in Miami. I was living in Miami for 10 years. I moved to LA in September, 2021. So I did all the open mics, all the shows I could have done there. Then I started taking classes with Barry Katz. Uh, he took me to another level. He's the one who told me to change my last name because it was too long and nobody could pronounce it. He was like, if you want to make it in the industry, let's make it short. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I was so working you, with Barry Cat. You dropped <laughs> Buttafuoco and you picked up Z- Zova. <laughs> yeah, right. Barry's the best. <laughs> Goddamn, Barry yeah. Katz. There's no better oh, yeah. um, Jay Moore doing Barry Katz. <laughs> is the funniest yeah. impression ever. I don't even know. <laughs> Emmy, you must be able to find Jay Moore somewhere doing Barry Katz. And then there's, was it Kids from the Hall? Who did James Baby Doll Dixon? Uh, the, the state. The, the state, The yeah. state did James Baby Doll Dixon. Right. I don't know what is it's so, so... inside. So, it's so inside. That's my agent. But there's <laughs> something so exquisitely satisfying about someone doing an impression of someone that only... 128 people on the planet know what, what, they, what they sound like, but they're such characters in general that it translates into a broader audience because Barry Katz is such a character mm-hmm. that you could enjoy that character being done whether you knew what he sounded like or not. Absolutely. And have you seen Brad Williams doing an uh, impression of Barry Katz? Oh, no. No. 
It's so good. It's <laughs> when he just gets it, like the tone and the way he speaks. Well, they hang out together a lot, I assume. So that's why he does it like perfectly. Good to know. Now is Brad doing Jay Moore's impersonation? Because that'll happen on occasion. He's doing barely cats. <laughs> Joke. Well, now we got to look at that's funny. We got to look at we got to look for Brad Williams doing Barry Cats. We got to look for Jay Moore doing Barry Cats. And then we got to look for the state doing uh, James Baby Doll Dixon. So you you took your mentality of being an athlete and saying, like, coach me. I want to I want to I want to follow instructions. I want to I want to take this into this other arena, which is. Interesting. One more thing for Emmy to look for. I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but somebody tweeted me yesterday that kids who play organized team sports are just a lot better at shit when they're when they're older. Sure. Stuff, stuff you already knew, but this was documented now that they're just better employees. They they're happier. They excel more like that, that base. And and I wonder, you know, the long-term ramifications about taking kids out of these contact sports nice. or these kickboxing, football, things like taking them away from these somewhat scary sports where they have to kind of overcome things and they can challenges into, you know, more individual, less physical things. I, I don't know if it's going to make for a bright future for a lot of those, a lot of those kids. Uh, you started, I'm reading here, you started doing, uh, calisthenics when you were five, but I don't even know what that means. Uh, it's gymnastics. It's rhythmic gymnastics. It's Olympic sport. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. So we just think of like it, random exercise. Here we just think of push ups and right, jumping jacks. <laughs> this is how they call it in Europe. The Putin's uh, wife, um, Alina Kabaeva, she's an Olympic champion in this gymnastics. It's not. So different types of gymnastics. This is rhythmic gymnastics when they have like a ball, they throw the ball, they catch it. Yeah. So that's a little bit, yeah, this is one, one I did. I feel like that one started with the ribbons. Yeah, the stick with the ribbon and then they have the ball. It went to the ball. Anything else in there? Like a, a bean bag for cornhole or? <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful oh to watch though when there's like a prop like that. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, 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 I concur. And that's Putin. Putin's wife is a former champion. Yeah, she's not not a legal wife, but yes, they have four kids together. They live together for the last, last ten years. Baby man. And yes, mm -hmm. she, someone yeah. needs to say to Putin, "You got a spinner and a yacht. How about you just chillax? <laughs> yeah. You know, what I mean, what else do you really need? Yeah. Enjoy your the winter of your life. Yeah, you could do a lot of seventy one year olds could do a lot worse. Yeah. Than you. Yeah. So. Um, you uh, you work with Barry. You do. What did you get out of a stand up coach in a stand up class? A lot of people say, "Oh, you can't teach that." A lot of people say, "I got a lot from doing that class." Mm -hmm. You know, some structure. Brian and I both did. We yeah. liked it a lot. Yeah. Is it something you recommend? Absolutely. I do recommend it. But what Barry teaches is not more about writing jokes. Yeah, sometimes he can help you with a punchline or something. But it's mostly about your mindset and the business. Because stand-up industry, it's a very specific niche. It's not something you can learn in school. So what Barry Katz teaches is mostly your mindset and how to win in the industry and how to make it. And he also teaches how to cut time. Because, you know, like in stand-up industry, it takes at least 10 years to make it. So Barry is very good at teaching a shortcut to, to success, I would say. How has this country treated you knowing you're from Russia and, you know, Ukraine? I don't know, probably telling everyone Ukraine now versus Russia. But, I mean, we have this stereotype here where, like, somebody comes in and they have an accent and we hate them. But I mm -hmm. find most people are kind of curious, like, where, curious. where are you from? And then we've turned... If Give me a good reason to hate you. Yes, if your Uber driver has an accent, we've turned asking them what part of the world they're from into a hate crime. When really most people are just making conversation and kind of interested, with a with an element of oh, you came from there to here. Yeah, I'm welcome. glad I'm glad I was born here. But how you've is... made fun of so many Uber drivers and and the music to listen to. And... Oh God. <laughs> Well, soca, soca music. Jesus fucking Christ. Right, but we just want to start conversation. Yes, the soca, 
Uh, where's that music even from? Anyway, Hell. how uh, how's the United States been for you? I was lucky. I had maybe only a few people like kind of experience racism, but everybody else, like you said, very curious, very welcoming. They make you feel at home. They actually encourage it. So I also felt respect because people do respect when somebody else moves from another country. Most of Americans never even left the country. So I was lucky to be surrounded with very good people. And I never experienced any big problems being Russian or Ukrainian. Were you studying English before you came here? A little bit. They did teach us in school, but it was more British version of English, <laughs> British English. So I Cheerio. learned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I learned English from hanging out with wrestlers in WWE. I knew how to write and how to read, but <laughs> my speaking English came in from wrestling. Was wrestling tougher on your body than kickboxing? Oh my gosh, yes. In kickboxing, I had maybe a few concussions and that's it. Like I was, my, I was trained very well how to protect myself and not to get injured. But in wrestling, every day something happens because all the bumps are real. There's a lot of communication between the wrestlers in the, in the ring. If you misunderstand something, miscommunication, injury happens. I've never seen so many injuries in my life the way I've seen it in WWE. It's very tough. In body. It, it, very it tough. is weird that the sport that's fake has the most injuries <laughs> the most real injuries uh, yeah well we think of it i i, I and we might be wrong because you're saying that you're communicating on the fly i think a lot of us assume that it's like almost like a choreographed dance that's pre-prepared it is but most of the matches um the referee oh my gosh i'm gonna i hope i'm gonna get it sued by WWE for saying that but a referee has a mic and producers, they sit behind the, in the green room and they watch reaction of the audience. And most of the times they change the match on the fly. So the referee comes to you and he whispers, girls, you have one minute to go home. Meaning instead of going for seven minutes, you have now only one minute. Oh, wow. Wow. Cut it short. Yeah. Or sometimes they tell you, oh my gosh, the audience reacts so well in other three minutes. Oy. And you have to communicate. That's why, like, all the girls always have hair down. This is how you whisper. You cover yourself. You hold your opponent. Oh. Ah, <laughs> technique. I knew Dangerous Danny Davis was running the show. <laughs> wow. I'd, uh, I had We'd all heard about choreographing and predetermined fight outcomes and stuff, but I, I didn't know about the ear, the ear That's piece ingenious. and the communication. So it's much more dangerous to do professional wrestling than it is probably even to do MMA and kickboxing, boxing, things of that, yeah. of that nature. Uh, I, Amy, can we find anything on anyone doing Barry Katz? I'm currently listening to Jay Moore doing it on this show. Oh, oh, well, that's true. That'll work. That is. That well, is he looks how we for that. It's interesting, like you pointed out, how uh, it doesn't matter even if you know the person. Like a great character can come from that person. I was thinking of George Costanza, of course, who's basically Larry David, mm -hmm. and uh, Doctor Evil is basically Lorne Michaels. Oh, no, no, right. everyone, everyone knows who Lorne Michaels is. It really sounds like, but yeah. it's a great character. Yeah, I never, uh, I never really thought about yeah, that. Yeah, either. So. Uh, had any creepy celebrities uh, hit on you that we might know about? She hits back. <laughs> yeah. Celebrities. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have mentioned some names. It's too big. But <laughs> we'll uh, I do. Yeah, who you yeah, got? I, I mean, uh, look, uh, look, guys are attracted to you. I, you know, I don't know why everything needs to be creepy. <laughs> is that the next book? <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, is you're a big time celebrity. You're a good looking dude. You're a leading man. Maybe you're divorced. You're out of a relationship. You turn on the women's, the fabulous women of glow. And uh, <laughs> your son, Sonny, your daughter, Natalia, come into the room. Yeah, get out. See, that's an attractive woman. Yeah. Maybe she's single. Yeah. I'll blow a call into her publicist. Yeah. And when we can go out to lunch. No, I'm no foul. Well, look, what is a, it's just really a, it's a more advanced dating app. Yeah. If you think about it, it's, yeah. And you know, people people get set up with their friends. That's not creepy. Right. This is like being set up, except for you've seen the person with their shirt right. off already. They're like vetted you've seen a them in a, in a movie. Yeah. So, anybody uh, anybody we may have heard of? Uh, well, maybe <laughs> he's going to kill me. Chris, uh, Kim Kardashian's first husband, Chris Hempster, the basketball player. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Barry Katz received email. <laughs> Somebody asked him to introduce 
him to me. Like, I'm like, Barry, why are you receiving those emails? <laughs> why did you go directly to me? <laughs> so, yeah. So, Chris Humphreys. Chris Humphreys. Chris Hemsworth, yeah. Did he see you wrestling or is it at a club? It was at the club, but actually, once he came talk to me at the comedy store, my rating be- among the comedians just like skyrocketed high. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Chris is talking to you. Like, how do you know him? I'm like, I don't know. I just met him. <laughs> the Q rating went up. What's yeah, your so- first? If uh, if you're just walking down the street, a lot of people getting assaulted these days, getting pushed out onto the subway tracks and everything. Again. It's all insane, but. If you're just confronted on the street physically and someone's going to come at you, what's your first move? Is it a kick, like a front ball kick? Is it a cross? Is it a quick jab? What's what's your move as a trained person? Well, it happened to me once uh, back in Russia. I was walking and the guy grabbed me by the shoulder and turned me around. And my first instinct was just to throw a jab. Um so it was just my instinct. Like, I didn't even think, I didn't even, like, it was just my instinct. I, th- I guess that, well, usually my kicks are the strongest, but at that moment, just a bunch of flus <laughs> happened. And uh, you punched your dad in the face who told you you were you leaving the house purse. without your keys. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you forgot your keys. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, no, it was a creepy guy. Um, I he's, His nose started bleeding. I don't know if I broke the nose, but he was bleeding. Oh, hope you did. What happened to him? Did he did he pick it up and leave? Or what was his it was, uh, it was outside of the nightclub in Russia, and he was very annoying. And I told him, don't talk to me. I don't want to deal with you. And I was leaving the nightclub, and he was following me. And, like, security were outside. So I just left, and the security had to deal with him. We have Jay Moore's impression of uh, Barry Katz from this show from, I don't know, several months ago. Dawson, yeah, Barry Katz gives you wisdom wrapped up in, are you, is he serious or not? You got to be undeniable, man. <laughs> yeah, but I had to get the fucking audition to be undeniable yeah. at, asshole. <laughs> He's great. You just have to create holy shit moments. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I always say, acting is just looking the other guy in the eye and telling the truth. No, Jimmy Cagney said that. Let me finish, boss. <laughs> Adam, I have a gig for you. It's in Banger, Maine. If you want it, you have to leave now. You have to pick up Steve Sweeney at the Din Hole. No travel. He is doing very good. It's cats. no money, but it's really great exposure. These are good people, man. And they have a kiosk of all Ace Man broadcasting stuff. Do you want the gig? My, my, do you want the gig? My Adam? agent sounds Adam, more like Joe gig? Pesci than, than, than Barry Katz. But Barry Katz said to me, uh, well, I mean, you know, we're friendly. He said, "Will you be Barry Katz?" Oh, we got tell it. Me I should do oh, wait, he's going to be Barry Katz. Hey, man, the stuff that you're doing, the content—it's a content-driven business. You're <laughs> incredible, man. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. You should do like, uh, what the fuck are you doing? You, you got to do like, let me wipe my teeth. Yeah, <laughs> I look just like Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, you do. You, you just—you got to do a one-man show, man. Yeah. Once you're on Broadway, you write your own ticket, pal. Yeah. <laughs> So I had this great moment where I was like, yeah, that, uh, that sounds like a good idea, uh, Barry. Uh, let, great, me, let, me, uh, let me talk to uh, – let me put you in touch with uh, my agent, uh, James Baby Doll Dixon. And then Baby Doll Dixon was like, why is Barry Katz talking to you about doing – and I was like, well, we're just friendly. He just brought just it up. pumped into him at the craft service table at Whitney. It was not a, I, didn't mean anything, I didn't mean anything by it, man. So later on <laughs> – I talked to uh, Baby Doll, like Baby Doll's like, don't worry, I straightened him out. I straightened him out. <laughs> You're not doing fucking Broadway. <laughs> Fuck him and his Jew ideals. <laughs> right. Straightened like, him out so he won't you be do talking a podcast, to you buddy. anymore. All right, we got it. Yeah, that was uh, Barry Katz told me I should do a stand up special, and then I told Dixon. <laughs> I talked to Barry Katz. He said, "Wait, he's like, why are you talking to Barry yeah. Katz? I'm your agent." And I'm like, "I ran into him." He said, "I should do. Oh, I'll take care of this. I'll bring you the new ideas." <laughs> Then he called me later, like, I handled this. There'll be no stand-up specials. I'm like, anything else we can do? You did not do? (laughs) (laughs) He got very territorial. I kind of felt like a woman who had the jealous husband. Who There was a kerfuffle at the restaurant, but part of me was flattered. Yeah, he had to pee on you. That's right. Huh? (laughs) Claimed his territory. Claimed his territory. (laughs) That was pretty good Barry Katz, right, Danya? Amazing. Made me laugh so hard. 
Well, later on, that was from this show from 2013, believe it or not. But we'll see if we can find uh, Brad Williams at some point. Or maybe we'll just call Brad Williams yeah. and he'll do it on the, on yeah. the spot. <laughs> just ask him. Try calling Brad Williams. I bet. Oh, what day is it? Let's see. He's probably he's probably around. Yeah, I mean, if he's if he's in Vegas, they certainly don't have a show right now. It's the oh, middle of the that's afternoin. right. He's doing, he's doing Cirque du Soleil, Apple. yeah, or whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever that whatever we're it's calling Cirque, it. Yeah, Cirque, yeah. Hold on, I might have it. Hold on, I saw it on Barry's Instagram. Hold on, uh, I might have the link. Oh, you you might have Brad <laughs> All on, hands on, deck. on Barry's yeah. Uh, Instagram. Yeah. Well, Let's we'll see. we'll see if we can uh, we'll see if we can. I'll tell you what. Let me hit a spot and I'll buy us uh, sixty seconds. CBDX <laughs> Delta Eight THC new cannabinoid sweeping the um, hemp and health and wellness market. CBDX.com sells Delta Eight products, which uh, feel like cannabis. Uh, vape products, actual flower bud, uh, gummies, even concentrates. Legal per the uh, 2018 Farm Bill Congress passed. Ships to 39 states, so you're probably in one of those. Use the code ADAM for not only 20% off your first order, but uh, even more. Order, ship within 24 hours. That's four letters, cbdx.com. Promo code Adam, am I right, Dawson? Do not drive or operate machinery when using these products. Please be responsible. All right, let's see. We have another female comedian coming up in a in a minute, Helen Hong. Uh, so we're trying to get hold of Brad. I just um, texted him, but he hasn't texted back. Well, you know, it's the craft kind of, table. Kind of short yeah. notice for. Hey, for Brad. Adam, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'll give a plug to uh, Anya again. Coming up, Cops Comedy Club, San Francisco, June fifteenth, and then uh, June seventeenth, Punchline, Sacramento. And uh, you can uh, sh- catch her on her Instagram, Anya underscore Zova, Z O V A, and find out what Anya's up to. Anya, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank I you. completely concur. All right, we'll see if we can. Well, we'll we'll get hold of Brad. We'll get hold of Brad. Uh, Comedian, actress, host, Helen Hong is in studio right after this. Helen Hong on the Adam Carolla Show. Helen Hong, (laughs) stand-up comedian. Well Hong is the name of the special. It's available on Amazon Prime and other streaming services as well. Good to see you, Helen. Thank you so much for having me. I I didn't realize what a drug addict I was until this (laughs) special came out. I was like, I might have an opioid problem. Helen is my grandmother's name, actually. I, that was one of the first jokes I ever wrote about how Helen is like the most uneffable name because everybody's <laughs> grandmother is named Helen. Wow. Yeah. And like you never be, uh, you know, I'm, every other person I meet is like, my grandmother's name is Helen. I'm like, you want to do it? What's, was she sexy? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it is an unfuckable <laughs> yeah, name. It really is. It really, that was a joke is like, it's the third most unfuckable name after Gertrude and Mildred. Oh boy. Yeah. Right. You'd rather fuck a Helen than a Gertrude. I would rather, well... Well, your grandma is Helen, so you'd probably yeah. rather not fuck a Helen over anyone. Well, I would do that in a different position with a certain vengeance, <laughs> because I didn't like the woman. <laughs> but Gertrude I would do as a more of a novelty. Yeah. You know Gertie. what I mean? Yeah. What yeah. about a Mildred? Mildred is, is tough, though you could go Millie. But even that's that's where, that's where stuff. An, where does an Edna fit in? Yeah, an Agnes, Edna, Edna. Um, Edna's pretty unfuckable. Also, Ethel, Ethel. Yeah. Ethel's I, pretty I would say unfuckable Ethel is a real too. boner killer. I, I had a, I my great aunt, God rest her soul, was Edna, and she was a Jew from the Bronx, heavy smoker. Mm. Who, of course, you're you're gonna be. Hold on, I'm getting hard. Yeah, yeah. That's going. Right. I know you're gonna freak out to hear that she moved to a retirement community in Florida. And she and now she's getting it. Like, well, she was, yeah. and then I said, and then she, she found this really gorgeous man who always wore a captain's hat, and I was like, oh, that's amazing! Like, did you go on a date with him? And she laughed. She goes, I wouldn't date him. He doesn't drive at night. <laughs> oh yeah. So that's, that's a big a thing priorities. for the elderly community. Priorities, yeah. Uh, just in the unfinished business department, oh. Brad Williams is on line one with Barry Katz. <laughs> Brad Williams. <laughs> 
I hear you have Helen in the studio right now. <laughs> she is. She's an up-and-comer, man. I mean, BuzzFeed called her one of 18 comedians who could take over the Late Show. <laughs> There's oh, only 18 of us. Absolutely that 2007? fantastic. Yeah. She's the funniest Asian female comedian since Jimmy O. Yang. <laughs> I think he's a dude, but all right. Jimmy. Have you... Uh, I don't... Yeah. Any... I don't know. I saw that special. <laughs> oh, did any advice? I mean, I know this is oh, uncomfortable, Helen. Helen. Yeah. Helen, yes. listen, I think Adam said something very poignant there. Oh. Is that... Your name is just, it's too old. Yeah. It's too old. I think you have to go, everyone wants younger, everyone wants hip. Um, Should I change gotta, it to Ashley or Amber? You, got, mm. you gotta go with Brittany with Brittany. four T's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brittany Brit- Hong. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's yeah. Nice it's hot, actually. Brit- yeah. T- 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 yeah. You got you gotta go Brittany Hong. No one wants to fuck Dorothy Agnes Hong. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's a good good point, that Barry. Is a really good point. Uh, did you watch your special? Do you, do you have any any notes? Any thoughts? I I watch all the specials on Amazon Prime, <laughs> man. I know man, many of my clients have specials on Amazon Prime. Brad Williams, I don't know if you know him. Mm. He's got two specials on Amazon Prime. I get 10%. Uh, I watched Helen's special. I think she's very funny. Very, <laughs> very wow. funny. Flashes of Phyllis Diller. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. That's a compliment. That's an unfuckable it's name Phyllis. from the past. Yeah. Phyllis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, no, you say, you say unfuckable, but one time in Las Vegas in 1989, I got a hand job from Phyllis Diller Whoa. at the Tropicana. Oh, wow. wow. Was her hand right. shaking from the... It like, probably helped. Like, yeah. If, like, Parkinson's? Yeah. If you, if you thought Phyllis was funny with a microphone, you <laughs> should see what she can do with a two-inch Jewish, Jewish cock. Wow. Doesn't she, didn't she scream into the microphone? Did she scream into your dick? Yeah, it echoed for miles. <laughs> Phyllis Diller famously called Loveline way back in the day and just hung up. Why? She just said, I had no idea what this show was about. <laughs> Some kid called in with herpes. She's like, I'm not doing this. Oh, wow. And she was very old and serious about it. She's I like, not that. for me. Sorry. <laughs> and she just she's hung Click. up. She didn't do a thing where it's like, oh, I got a roast in the oven or something. She just went, I don't like what you're doing. I This is not for me. You lost I'm, me at I'm herpes. I'm hanging the Click. phone wow. up. Yeah, I've had a few of those. Sorry, Barry. So, uh, but any notes for Helen? Is she working a little too blue? Is she is she cashing the uh, Asian check too often? Like, what was your take? You know what worked for Ali Wong was mm-hmm. getting knocked up twice before oh, her special. Sure. Yeah. Right. Un- unbelievable, undeniable Ali Wong. So, mm. Helen, yeah. can you... Can you, can you get someone to drop some baby juice in you? Oh. I think it would give you more juice in the industry. Yeah, that. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm going to need to start taking a collection for baby <laughs> juice. I'm just going to go. Listen, I'm, I'm going to set up a meeting between you and Bert Kreischer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very that, fertile. That, that kid would be so goddamn funny. Yeah, I, it would be funny. Very and he fertile. would have a, a mm. great tummy. Very, yes. mm. Mm. He's got he's got a successful podcast. Mm. With any luck, we could stick a microphone up your hoo ha in yeah. the third trimester. Oh, Never that'd be amazing! That. I bet the ultrasound would be hilarious. Yeah, the kids like. Have you heard the one? Absolutely. About the- Bar- I'll, I'll set up that meeting. Thank okay, you, Barry. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. This is why the comedians all come to you. That's right. And uh, I've the- got a, I've got a lot of great advice. Adam, are are you still with that? Chain smoking fraud of a manager. Wow. Oh, it's really? Oh, you could just call it's him James. James. James, baby doll Dixon. Uh, yeah. Some bad blood. Yeah, I am. I know you guys maybe got on the wrong side of each other when you suggested I do uh, my own stand up special, and he kind of <laughs> shot that down. But yeah, baby doll still, still with me. 
listen, I don't even know how that man is still alive after what he has smoked. It's unbelievable. Him and Keith Richards will still be around after the nuclear holocaust. He does smoke man. a lot. Yeah. Like roaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you, if you ever want to go from number five in the podcast <laughs> to number four, you give Barry Katz a call. Oh. I or will, Barry. Oh, and thank you. Thank you for the tutelage. I appreciate it. No yeah. problem. Helen, you're undeniable. Thank you're you. an amazing, amazing talent. Oh. You're on my Mount Rushmore of Asian female comedians <laughs> over 30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Barry. You're the best. He's the uh, best. Brad Williams, though, he's shady. I think you should drop him. Yeah, drop Brad, yeah. but uh, mm. pick up Helen. Have you... Had spent time with Barry Katz. I don't want to Not dedicate the much. show to him. But, I know, uh, I know him a little. Yeah, I think when I first started, he was just more active. But mm, he's th- that was uh, pretty dead nuts on uh, Barry Katz. So maybe we'll bring in Brad and Jane that can have a Barry Katz off. <laughs> we should bring in Barry. <laughs> oh, Barry, can, can Barry will come in too. <laughs> you should have Barry and Brad, and they could have a Barry off. Yeah, dueling Barry. Yeah. Like who's doing the better Barry? Yeah, uh, it'll be tough. We'll have to close our eyes and sequester ourselves yeah so uh sorry helen back to you <laughs> enough enough with the berry cat uh, that was the best talk. advice i've ever gotten is get some some baby juice and yeah. then stick a stick a mic up my hoo-ha mm-hmm. yeah yeah it it worked for ali wong right yeah. uh was she pregnant in both specials or just one yeah two spe- two out of three specials she was pregnant wow. really yeah <laughs> and she was breastfeeding in the other one i don't know where you guys come down on van slip-ons when you're pregnant don't ask me. I don't know if I have an opinion. <laughs> I feel like it's. Slip-ons? I I I have strong opinions about men over forty who wear van slip-ons. Mm-hmm. I don't like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, they're usually the guys who are wearing too many of those weird wooden wooden bead bracelets right, the at the That's same true, time. You know, you, there, there's a type. You're right. If, if you see a van slip-on on a guy, it's never accompanied with socks. And you know they just smell. Yeah, yes. they just smell. But also, there's a bigger thing, which is the guy's 54 and trying to, trying to kind of paint a picture where he still skates a little right. bit. Yeah, or they have long hair. There's Keep a, it a real. Put one over on us. It's a little. It's a little thirsty yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. But if I see a plain blue van slip-ons, I, I'll. I can look the other way. If I see the checkered flag, black mm-hmm. and white van mm-hmm. slips, I have no. I, I don't like any human being. <laughs> was that any still, male that was wears that still a trend, Gina? By the time your wedding came around, it was mm. certainly in my era for what felt like a decade. The groomsmen they'd wear the tuxedo and the mm. whatever, but the kids are real and they were cool. Oh God, van no. slip on. If you uh, think I would allow that, matching vans, and that no. was a big trend. That was. I was like, they'll fucking never no. happen at any wedding I'm a part of. No. No. Or like I've seen weddings where the dude's in a suit, but then he's wearing like flip flops with the suit. I don't yeah, like that. that I don't like any precocious nine year olds wearing Wayfair sunglasses. Yeah. Like, oh, he's a bad dude. Too cool. You know, I. Yeah. If your all... wedding's on the beach in Hawaii, flip flop it up, go crazy. Yeah. If you're in a fucking skate park getting married, fans <laughs> all day. Otherwise, right. show some goddamn respect. <laughs> I agree. I I do. Helen, are you married? I'm not married. I just read the most (laughs) insane story about a wedding I've ever heard, and it was so enraging to me. It was a couple who was so obsessed with Disney World. Yes. Did you read about this? I did. Did you guys talk about this? No, we haven't talked about it. They they took the money that they would have spent on food Mm -hmm. at their wedding and put it towards having Mickey and Minnie there. Yeah. So they didn't serve food or drinks <laughs> at their wedding. Stuffies. But they had Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> yeah. And all the guests were like, this is bullshit. And I was like, it is bullshit. Yeah, that's you're, an you're insane. You're going to invite my ass to a wedding and not feed me, but expect me to applaud because you've got Mickey and Minnie there? Go fuck yourself. I hope you guys get divorced tomorrow. Right. So you objected? <laughs> a little <laughs> you raised bit. raised your hand. <laughs> a little uh, bit. Well, first off, Mickey and Minnie, you, you hire party pals. It's eighty five bucks yeah, a head, right? Say. That's that. Your budget for food for the wedding was one hundred and sixty three dollars. Thousands of dollars. But, but how do you squander that on Mickey and Minnie? I think they got the, the Mickey official and Minnie from like Mickey through and Disney Minnie. World. Official. Official. Like I think it was the official. Like through food. Disney World or something. Yeah. Did you guys? Well, then you're gonna like this. It's like story. getting your transmission fluid changed at the dealership. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can see it get a lot cheaper. Amy, you can find this, but somebody attempted to propose yes. at Disney Euro. It, 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 I think it's the Paris one. Very Euro hard Disney to watch. Euro Disney or Paris. What, I, what there... was gross about it? What was oh, gross about it? should we say or should we save it? I haven't seen it. It's, um, it's it, very French. It's a guy <laughs> attempts to propose in, in front, front of, of like the Magic Castle. Castle. But Picturesque. He, he yeah. goes... I guess the couple goes on to some platform or some yeah. landing that was a no-fly zone Apparently. for customers. And he's pr- he's down on one knee. He opens the box. He presents Does her with Mickey the ring. tackle him? Oh, worse. The girl, like, you know, ah, ah, a dude who's in just some, like, random, like, Mickey, I don't know, Disney tie-dye T-shirt, walks in between them, grabs the box, and goes, nope, nope, no. go down the stairs. No. Nope, 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 go, I, go, go, I didn't, go. He didn't even walk in. He swooped Yeah, in. he swooped. He was like a condor grabbing a field mouse. Yeah. Like and he, he just, grabbed the ring box? He in the middle of them. It's, it's, it's the employee? It's, yes. It's oh, literally... He couldn't wait two more seconds? No, no. It's it's what Don Beebe yes. did to Leon Lett to Leon Lett in the Super Bowl at the uh, one and a half yard line. Oh, uh, at the one inch yeah. line, like he held the ball out and he just swooped in and snatched Knocked his it. Loose. Shit. I don't know, yeah, I don't know shit about sports. So I don't know what y'all. Are you don't know who about. Leon Lett is? No, You're Korean. Come me, on. I feel like I feel like the thing that's uh, that my the the analogy that works for me is the Kanye Taylor Swift moment. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm gonna let you finish. This, you're right. This is the mic grab. I well, guess. we'll find the Why? Leon Let Don Beebe, okay, and you re- two ladies will be embarrassed about your I'm lack sure. of Super Bowl knowledge. But <laughs> Why is this not allowed? I, I don't, he must be on like some like performing this platform. Looks, this does like look stage. really this idyllic. This is where the up with people players are going to be in a half <laughs> right, hour. Right. Papa Do Run Run's going to take the stage. <laughs> the leather girl, sure. English yeah. leather girl. They just walked up there, right? Oh, and wow. so and he he's says proposing. he got permission from someone. He gets down he got, on he a got knee. Down on his knee. People are freaking out. It's got it out. Guy Whoa. runs in, down, not down. on his watch. Wow, not on this his watch. He's wearing ears. Is yeah. He's wearing... He swooped in. This is... That's that guy's enormous. He's basically telling him, "You got to do it here. You can't do it there." Wow, that guy was the most obnoxious Mickey Mouse eared guy. Not oh. just that, he was he was incongruous. Like this joyous moment with the ears, and here comes like nope. no, He kill. was he was the he was a call the man. I'm the manager. Yeah, I'm the manager. Did anyone call the manager? He's like a male Karen in yeah. Mickey ears. Yeah, mm-hmm. that guy is a male Karen. Karen. Or uh, you je would suis say. une Karen, and this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. You must do it at the bottom of the stairs. Now, we got to save hard. a little energy for the guy who was proposing. Like, you got man tits and a gunt on you. Do you go boy. with a tight white T-shirt? It's a it's Euro. It's a choice in Europe. Yeah. 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 It's a choice that's not... So I need to often. know you have man tits from outer space. <laughs> yeah. You don't have an extra large Van Heusen you could just button up. Dare I go so far as to say it's an Eastern European choice if you oh. spend any time in my neighborhood. Well, you know the thing about the gut and the titties on a guy, yeah. they're oftentimes accompanied with a nice looking robust forearm uh-huh. and sometimes even a good chin. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so if you take a nice collared shirt yeah. and you just roll the sleeves up two mm-hmm. rolls, you'll just look like a big dude. Mm-hmm. Right. You're not going to look like man titties yeah. or fat dude. Right. You'll just look like a dude I wouldn't want to fuck with in the parking lot at the Gelson's. Right. He just looks like a guy I wouldn't want to fuck. Right. Yeah. But saying he's heading out to propose. He's very breasty. Yeah. Why is he wearing a t-shirt that's saying, and by the way, if you got man tits before the marriage. You're wearing a training bra That's before go. you're, you're going double D. You're going to be, you're, you got, you're both breastfeeding the baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm sorry, have we not acknowledged the very tight white jeans? Because that's I mean, part this of guy's it. in yes. all white. And yeah. the, like, I feel like at least he needed a belt or something. Yeah, like, this break whole, it up. All white outfit, head to toe, no belt, white pants, white shirt, white. Pants, also, like, the white all sneakers. white. He's a Michelin man. Mm-mm. The all white in the place that just sells snow cones. Mm-hmm. And Churros. ice cream you eat with a stick, yeah. a yeah. wooden turkey, stick, yeah. like the king's turkey. You're leg. either gonna spill shit on yourself, yeah. or at some point you're gonna shit yourself <laughs> from all the shit you ate. <laughs> this is a, the worst place in the world to wear white. Yeah, she's right? cute. She is really, she's super cute, and he's. Hmm. I don't, I don't think this thing was gonna last, and I think that 
intrepid employee had a feeling. But he went, but he, this guy in the white, he looked like he wanted to beat up Mickey well, ears. Yes, and that's he? what I was going to say. If it was here, if this was Orlando or whatever, the Mickey guy would have been laid out. Just a throw. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that guy's definitely Punched Euro. He's if, he no tats. Right, yeah. Can't. Can't be American. Yeah. So mm. this is Disney Euro. Is there only one Disneyland in Europe? I and think. And is it in France? I think it's in France. And then there's one in China. And then, is that it? I'm so Well, either way, person. if you're I... this guy, if you're this employee's manager. They apologized. But how do you feel? Do you go, that kid's got it? Oh, yeah. You rules promote are him. rules. We run a tight ship. Or well, do you, knowing do you, what I know about Disney, that they're really like they're really militant about their rules. Yeah. Probably the, this guy got a pat in the back. But like, think of all the bad press. Like he just ruined their moment, and now this video's gone viral, and people are like, "What a douche move!" I'd be willing to bet he was told to break it up. Like, no, no, stop that. You know mm. what I mean? Because where does this kid get off? He, and, like, well, maybe he's in charge of the stage, but he could have. We can Said watch it. Earlier. We can watch it again. He ran. Yeah. yeah. He didn't walk with he purpose. Per- no, he I think maybe he is the manager. <laughs> maybe he's he's le le captain. Yeah. <laughs> I am the captain of this stage. And just so Euro, you know, Euro, no Euro, proposing up here. Does Euro Disney? I've never thought about. It, I've never been there, but they must have a menu that's a little bit fucked up. Mm. Like you know, they have like churros, but with mayonnaise <laughs> or something. You know, there's some weird Euro yeah. version of what they have. Something weird like crepes, or there's going to be something that delights it's us, awesome. right? Crispy treats, but jicama. Yeah, something weird. Yeah. There's got to be something weird in Euro yeah. over there, right? Well, and ketchup also, chips yeah, oh, instead of uh, barbecue. Canadians Flavored. love those. Yeah. Yeah. There's also um, I remember the chicks that worked there got super pissed because they're not allowed to wear nail polish or certain colors of makeup, mm. and they're like, "Who the fuck are you talking to? Really? Like, this is how we roll." So they didn't like that. But there's California, Florida, obviously, Paris, Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and I think that's everybody. Oh, hmm. wow. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, now you have to find the menu at the uh, Pirates Bar or whatever they, <laughs> what do they have over there? Because it's got to be it's, it's, some influence from us. It's freedom fries with, with, yes, mayonnaise. with some fucked up Euro flavor uh, on it, right? right? With Freeze. Dijon mustard. Yeah. yeah. Dijon. It's got to be something. <laughs> All right. Uh, Helen, sorry. Uh, I'm just, do you have dates uh, coming up? Oh, by the way, you got a podcast. Go Fact Yourself. I have a podcast called Go Fact Yourself, which is a trivia podcast. And you can say it as angry as you want to. You know what? You can go fact yourself. Oh, and you're on NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, yes. which is uh, a very entertaining show, so which good. has got to be going on year 28 or something. Yeah. I mean. 21, 20, 21 or 22. Yeah. It's been around. Yeah, it's been around. Where do you guys do that show when you do that, that show? That show was is usually based in Chicago, and then during the pandemic, we all went uh, remote, so we were all doing it from our closets and stuff, and now things are opening right back up, like just starting to open back up, so it's mostly in Chicago. One weekend out of the month, it goes on the road somewhere. So and you, Alonzo's on that yeah. show, too. Alonzo yeah. Bowden. You yeah. do trivia-based stuff? I do. But you don't know Leon Lett. <laughs> <laughs> Curious. <laughs> I don't know. I bet the producers want to hear about that. I literally the other day said, "Did you to someone? Did you know that LeBron just became the first billionaire in the NBA? <laughs> no, in the NFL. Oh boy, oh, boy. that's probably confusing." Yeah. And they were like, "The NFL, really?" So Leon Lett, yeah. Well, you won't drop this. Da- Leon, well, you're, upset. You guys, you're obsessed with you me not to, knowing you, Leon Lett. You need to see the footage. I know yeah. nothing. Then, I literally know nothing about Let's, sports. We got to set the table. Because it, it's an table. incident. So, okay, so the Super Bowl, Dallas Cowboys, this is circa 92-ish. Cowboys are blowing out the Bills, and Leon Led is it's the a end of the game. defensive player for the Cowboys. They're up by 30 points or oh, whatever geez. it is. And uh, he picks up a fumble and makes for the end zone. He's going to put him up by seven more points. Right. And he starts hot-dogging. It's for the third or fourth quarter, whatever it is. So he's, he's just hot- being a punk. He's hot-dogging a little bit yeah. as he streaks. He looks around, doesn't see anybody. He starts to struggle. He's like, hey, bitches. Yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's got the ball out spread yeah. wide. He's 
doing well strutting. Meanwhile, Don Beebe, the gritty white receiver. <laughs> oh. He, he, he's making his way down the sidelines, and he catches him. Oh, let's it's a hustle one. play. Okay, and okay. everyone loved Don Beebe because the game was over. There's no reason he had to hustle right. the entire but way. He's like, oh, sprints. no, I'm not doing I'm not letting this. I'm not yeah. letting this slide. Yeah, the bills are being destroyed. So it was just it was just like on a philosophical level. I'm yeah. yes. not going to let you. It was the Super Bowl. It was, you know. Yes. First. Ball comes out. Leon There's picks Leon. it up. Leon's a big dude. Only fat guys around. Here comes on, baby. Like, now it looks like he gets into the end zone, <laughs> but he doesn't. Smacks it out of and it was inches away from being into the <laughs> into the end zone. And you know why he held it out, Brian? No, I assume he's hot dogging. Because he was just being like a no, suckers. and yes, but uh, the playmaker, Michael Irving, mm -hmm. he, that's what his Oh, move, that was his thing? That was his move, oh, and so Leon like, played defensive line, and he never touched a football. So he's sense. thinking, okay. oh, my teammates on the offense, he scores all touchdowns. He does that move. Here's this, so this I'm going to do his yeah. move on the two-yard line. Like, as I yeah. enter the end zone, I'll just hold the ball out and Don just wait. Uh, so that so it that away. didn't make it as a touchdown. No. Like, oh shit. Okay. And, and that's exactly what happened to that couple in Paris. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I just did a quick pass at the food at the Euro Disney. Yeah, they have steak and ratatouille together. Okay, fine. The way more interesting menu is in Tokyo. Oh in Tokyo Disney. yeah. This is what separates uh, the men from live the boys. Animals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Ukiwa Donald Duck shrimp bun. Ooh. Probably a, a made of a, a duck. A, a delicious, that'd be awesome. Steamed bun with mm -hmm. Donald on the front. Uh, deep sea pineapple smoothies, fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mickey Mouse shaped hard boiled eggs. Yeah, oh. that wouldn't work. Wow. With the yolk, the yolk is that is advanced. The ears. Wow. I don't even want to know how they do that. Yeah, on a bed of like vegetables. You got to train the shit out of that chicken, <laughs> yo. <laughs> the chicken's doing calisthenics. Little Must green make <laughs> Mickey ears. <laughs> and little green men uh, dumplings. They have a churro. A potato churro. Boom. Uh, see, I knew they fucked with the churro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a You're right. You called the churro thing. He did. You're right. I, well, can, can I just say this? A churro is just a fucking churro. It's basically a straight it's donut. A donut. It's yeah. a straight donut. Hey, just, Freud. Just, 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 they'll like it. We don't need to put your flavor. No. You don't need yeah. to fuck with it. It's, it's cinnamon. Just, it's a fucking no, but cinnamon this is donut. Like, this is like, you know, McDonald's. When you go to different McDonald's mm -hmm. around the world, they serve different things. Like in yeah, Hawaii, yeah. they serve at McDonald's in Hawaii something Thing called Simon, which is like a ramen, but like the Hawaiian version of ramen. I don't and like in it. In Korea, you can get kimchi. Don't like it. That'd be good. Don't like it. It's our shit. <laughs> we love your sushi. We don't go, oh, you know, put more Thousand Island on top more of this. More chicken ring tenders. Uh, I, want some more I want some ranch to dip that. Oh, we're no, ugly. That I don't care. Roll. But we so like your fucking true, sushi. Have All you right. seen the roll? I that tell them to hold it. Fucking... It's ugly. I don't abide by it. Yeah. Look, the, 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 I'm, I'm gonna, these are like the Proud Boys. This is a small group of agitators. I don't defend them. I don't know anyone who does. Have this is a small group of outliers. Have you ever seen the sushi rolls with like outliers. fucking cream cheese on them? I, that is amazing. American is fine. All right, that's on the owner. I'm sorry to do this to you. I'll give you Panda Express and say we bastardized Chinese food exactly. beyond all recognition. Oh, it's <laughs> it's, it's wildly it's popular. It's cookie, but and I don't and I've never been to China, so when I hear it, I hear it's different. And I agree. If I ever go sushi and they go, oh, I see the squeeze bottles, the mango I'm syrup. like, get that fucking yep. corn syrup away from my yep. shit. Fucking, I don't like the it. The rainbow roll with like fried. Actual rainbow. With actual rainbow and like, let's put cream cheese on it. It's like, ah, All that's right. this is what the Japanese are doing. But this is doing. a churro. You didn't fucking invent yeah. it. And we don't need to fucking do gymnastics so you'll buy one. Yeah. It's just a fucking churro. Learn to love it. No, I think you're right. Expand your palate and your universe a little and bit. And your yeah. waistline. And exactly. your waistline. <laughs> Let me just give you a few more of these. A soft serve jelly dessert, which is basically boba in jello. A Gross. pizza spring roll. Mm. Mm. I'm just saying, like, I, I, I the fillet of fish has squid ink on it. Like, no, <laughs> just give a it's fucking fillet of fish. You'll learn to like it. Yeah. If you don't like it, your kids will eventually uh -huh. like it. Yeah. That's how. Mc, that's I'm how actually McDonald's surprised works. at how much on this menu is just regular like Disneyland food. Because it's you're, you've been scrolling. I've been watching yeah. you over your shoulder. You're scrolling. They and have it's popcorn. like almost all regular Disneyland food, and then a couple some of good stuff. Weird, they have so gyoza sausage buns. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a Mickey churro. I wonder which one they sell more of. They have a um, a fried chicken and waffle sandwich, which looks amazing. But I can't tell. Like maybe there's some vegetables on there that America wouldn't a abide by. Chicken and waffle sandwich that looks amazing. I bet it costs like nine thousand mm. dollars. <laughs> 
What do we do oh, with God. like that's the thing about Disney World, right? Is like you buy this sandwich and you have to mortgage your house. I know. My son just got back from Disneyland and was telling me how expensive the tacos were. Did you ever see the movie The Florida Project? Yes. yes. Oh my Isn't god. Isn't that a great movie? But my favorite thing is like the woman was like hook like she's like prostituting herself and she ends up stealing um he had gotten day passes for his whole family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they were like a thousand dollars a person like a special wrist oh yeah um, entry wrist mm-hmm. thing and he had four for each member of his family and she stole them and then he obviously couldn't report her to the cops because he was like soliciting i've done the disney with the guy to Five hundred and seventy-five bucks an hour. Well, aren't you a bougie bougie? <laughs> I fucking hated it. I hated it. What does that mean? Some dude in a Mickey ears is like, and here's the waffle cone stand. It's a chick in a tartan s- skirt who walks you to the front of every line, and you just cut in front of people. Oh my god! Did you feel like a king? I hated it. You did, but wouldn't you rather do that than wait in line? Yes. You'd rather not be at Disneyland. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't, you know, they, my first question, the first thing, when I heard of this, I now realize everyone just lies to me. <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, like when you're, you're taking your kid to the dentist, you know, and you go, is it going to hurt, Papa? No, oh. no, it's good. No, you like it. No, it's a good discomfort. thing. You just lie to me yeah, all the time. Pressure. Like, I go, how's this thing work with this guide? And they go, well, you get in, you don't have to wait in any of the lines. And I go, I don't want to walk with my entire family and just step in front of yeah. another family who's been waiting in line just for seven hours and just heat stroke and just go, yep. sorry, that's my toboggan. <laughs> just slide right in front of the family from Arkansas that's been, got sunstroke. You know, I said, I, I just don't, I don't want to do that. I'm not comfortable with that. And they go, oh, no, no. There's just a separate just entry. Discreet. They just bring in over here. I love that. And nobody knows it. And I'm like, oh. Okay, but I'm trying to picture in my mind. What is this separate? Yeah. You know, where's and, that door? There's no separate. No. They just walk you right uh, in yeah. front of. Hey, sorry, losers. Uh, yeah. My kids. Oh, honey, take the silver spoon out of your mouth so we can get on the you yeah. know, log jammer this is here. Like, uh, and this you just like, walk in front of people. This like is it. like having to walk through first class to get to coach, mm, which yes. I have a lot of experience with that. And I just, I just rip a fart. Like yeah. as I'm passing first class, like it's You're just my one. signature move. Yeah. I just rip the, I just save them all from the day before, and I make sure I eat beans and whatever. Yeah, and I just rip a nasty one, and I crop dust as I'm going through because I'm like, "Fuck y'all, I'm headed to coach." Yeah, yeah. and good luck Even with Comfort that Plus screen block it out anyway. <laughs> oh, not fun. the upgrade. <laughs> no, listen, plus. and this why this is why it ain't first class unless you turn left. <laughs> If you're turning left, you're in real first class. If you're mm-hmm. turning right, you're getting crop dusted yeah. by an Asian comedian. Yep. <laughs> I know your grandfather said it many times, but I'm here to tell you that Tales man was all this time. That yep. man was right. All right, should we take a break and come back and do the news with Helen and Gene and Bald right after this? Well, we have some gun legislation news out of a very liberal state and a fairly conservative state, as we've seen. Um, so let's start with New York. At least one state, that's New York, is is attempting to do something specifically when it comes to guns, with a gun problem. On Monday, New York Governor Kathy Hochul signed gun reform bills into law that ban people under 21 from buying or having semi-automatic rifles. The new law also criminalizes those who make mass threats. Uh, Florida, if we head down south, we have Governor Ron DeSantis. He signed a bill aimed at improving school safety in Florida. Um, That bill is known as HB 1421. It takes several steps to prevent school shootings, or at least hopefully. It requires school safety officers to uh, to make complete crisis intervention training, allowing school safety officers to arrest Uh, on charter school property and requiring school districts annually certify 80% of school personnel uh, have received youth mental health awareness training. So two different approaches and uh, toot sweet. If you're going to hire, I've said it before, but the problem with the safety officers is we never really know how they're going to react when the shit goes down. Well, so far it's yeah. been zero for so zero. Far, Unfortunately, not, we do no know. heroes yeah. among safety officers. It's yeah. not been. It's not been great, and <laughs> yeah. that's why. I think if 
you sign up to be a cop at a school, you're not like the Rambo type. No. That's just going to be like, I'm here to, yeah. Yeah, you're going to jump in front of the bullet. I think you're like wanting to be, you're like one step above a desk job. Yeah, it's like your slow spin into retirement. Exactly. You want to point and yell. Hey, no running. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Plenty of time for backup. Plenty of time. Ample. I grew up, every single cop show I watch, it's just like, no time for backup. I'm going in. <laughs> There's yeah. ample time for black backup if you watch, and if, and if not, they'll watch make these time. shows now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it was always unclear, too, where it's like, you're at a warehouse <laughs> on the wharf, on the waterfront. <laughs> the guy's in there. Why do you have no time for backup? Yeah. Where is this guy <laughs> He's going? He's just in an empty warehouse. Yeah. I would have all the time for backup. But yeah. You have to stage an event during the application process. Mm-hmm. And not tell them that it's a drill. Right. Like, so like tell them it's, like, make have, them believe it's yeah, the I'm real deal. Yeah, sit down deal. in the office. They're filling out some paperwork. They're talking Suddenly about the Suddenly outside, bang, bang, bang. All of a sudden, crazed, disgruntled mm-hmm. employees right. st- stammers into the, into the lobby firing. This guy goes under the desk. Sorry. Yeah. Tear Sorry. up that app. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it harkens back to better days. Remember how charming it was to go postal? Mm-hmm, <laughs> like yeah. that, that's charming when we think yeah, about it. It's different. true because you would only hit up your post office and you'd maybe kill two people and that was going postal. Yeah. And now it's, it's like, like... It's like hearing about a pickpocket. Right, yeah, exactly. No, so it's cute. I'm going to play you, um, and you may have seen it by now, but it's worth playing. I'm a, the mom in Uvalde who was like, fuck you guys, to the cops and ran in to get her kids. Mm. But before that, I, and it's too depressing, I didn't bring it. Um, there's the teacher who all of his students were mowed down. Yeah. Do you know why? Hmm. The safety training said, and this is very hard to say, but the safety training told him that when this happens, gather all your kids under the desk and make them pretend like they're going to sleep. like So they're quiet. Well, guess what? This motherfucker comes in sitting ducks and just sprays yeah. all of the kids who are hiding and he was together shot. under the The teacher table. was shot. Yes, he was. He was shot a couple times. So he he's... But he survived. He survived. He, survived. he is fucking yeah. rip shit at the police. He begged the, the parents not to blame him. He said, this is what we were told to do. So, well, I did, whether it's the cops or, or the students or the teacher, you know, the old methodology would be just comply just mm-hmm. just you know the guy wants your wallet right. you hand it to him but you right. just stay where you are oh, there's yeah. a lot of uh, there was a weird thing of like if you get lost in the wilderness don't move stay where you are you stay right where you are yeah. until hypothermia yes. kicks in yeah. and vultures eat you it's yes. like yeah. there's this weird adage like if anyone wants something you comply Please. you yeah. stay you stay where you are you yeah. don't start doing things don't be a hero and i don't feel like that's worn off you have yeah. the cops like, staying where they are. That's like you have- uh, my dad, you know, they're all with all these like Asian hate attacks. Mm-hmm. And I bought my parents mace. And I and my dad was like, I have a whole system. I've got I've got my fake money, my <laughs> fake wallet in my one pocket. Wow. And if they ask me for money, I'll just pull out the fake wallet that only has two bucks in it. And I'm like, yo, these people are not going to ask you for shit. They're going to just come up and punch you in the head right. out of the blue. Right. Like, nobody's asking you for shit. Like, nobody's asking these people for their wallet. I know, I wish right. they were They're asking for something. They're just getting kicked in the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes. and it's the same thing with, with the shooting, like you said. Like, it's not comply. And, I, you know, it's like, it's like how many ways can we escalate the school safety? It's not about the school safety. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that fucking 18-year-olds are getting AR-15. Well, and they so I know, prefer the New York law. Well, and they know, like, oh, sweet, this is the school. This is what they're telling the kids to do. Like, this will be easy. Like, the secret's out to psychopaths. Yeah. So here's this woman, Angeli Gomez, who you may have heard from already. Um, this is a clip from a news uh, report, so you'll hear their voice come in and out. But It's a minute 20, totally worth hearing all of. So this is, she basically, she was cuffed because she tried to run into the school and then she convinced them, I'll be good, I'll be good, let her out of the cuffs and ran for it into the school. Wow, my mom would never Right away as I parked, um, U.S. Marshal started coming toward my car saying that um, I wasn't allowed to be parked there. And uh, he said, well, we're going to have to arrest you because you're being very uncooperative. I said, well, you're going to have to arrest me because I'm going in there and I'm telling you right now, I don't see none of y'all in there. Y'all are standing with snipers and y'all are far away. I'm, if y'all don't go in there, I'm going in there. He right, immediately put me in cuffs. She says after Uvalde police officers told marshals to uncuff Gomez, she ran towards the school. As soon as they uncuffed me, I jumped that first gate fence. And once I jumped it, I went to my son's class and I knocked on the door and I remember the teacher saying, 
um, I'm like, hey, they're already, they're already um, boat cutting the fence to get me. She's like, you think we have time to get out? I said, you'll have time. I'm going to run for my other son. Once she was assured her son was okay, Gomez ran to get her other child. I see that they're opening my son's door. I go run for my son and I get him. With both of her kids out safe, Gomez still can't shake the thought of those who didn't make it. The gunshots were still active. They were not in there. There was no one in there. If anything, when I pulled up, my car was closer to the school than, the, where, than where the snipers and everybody that was laying on the ground were. They could have saved many more lives. They could have gone into that classroom and maybe two or three would have been gone, but they could have saved a whole, a whole more, the whole class. They could have done something. Another theme is the moms. We showed the mom Oof. who got ran yeah. over by the car yeah. earlier in the show. And, and popped right up. Popped up, <laughs> got that stroller back on its wheels. This is mom running moms into are, gun. Moms are ballsy. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why they say in nature, don't give it between a mom and her cubs, right? Mm -hmm. like, well, it's no, it's, it's why communism doesn't work, which is none also of the, that. All the fucking guys standing out front didn't have a kid in that classroom. Oh, right. She had skin in the game. fucking game. Who is the one running in without yeah. the gun? Yeah. There were good guys with guns. There were good yeah. guys with Didn't guns. Mean shit. Now, if you took all those good guys with guns and gave them two kids and put them in a classroom, oh, then they would have swarmed game. on I heard it. that there were cops kids in that they pulled out. Yeah, the cops, the cops went in to get their, their own, kids, own kids and then and then I heard that's some out. of that too. That's yeah. been that? tweeted. I can I have looked for sources on that, can't find any, okay. but people so definitely maybe tweeted it. Rumor. Yeah, I'm, maybe I, it's just rumor. I looked for that as well. Yeah. That would have been that then those people should, should go to jail. No. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, you know, if like I'm gonna get my kids and then I'm gonna bounce and it's your whole well, job. It's your only job. Yeah. It's your only job. Protect and or serve. <laughs> Well, and how many years ago I heard this on uh, some newscast, but it was a few years ago where uh, the governor of Texas sent out a tweet saying, like, can you guys believe this? California has purchased more guns than we have. Like, come yeah. on, Texas, get on it. The Texas governor. It was Abbott. Yeah, what are you doing? We yeah. purchased more than Texas? Apparently, this was in 2018 yeah. You guys are near Burbank, you know. Oh, yeah. just, you know how, like, just how that many gun strip. shops are in Burbank? Like, I'm always astounded when I come up to Burbank. I'm like, Jesus, am I in Texas right now? There's like, like, what is happening? Yeah, there's oh. like four just well, on the Yeah, well, how strip. much of California is not LA and yeah. San Francisco right. and San Diego? It's a True. lot of wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you do drive through the city on New Year's Eve. Oh, <laughs> you will hear yeah. the evidence of uh, people owning guns it in this city. Indeed. And there's a range in Burbank, too. A there's a few ranges. One. Yeah. Firing line and Oak Tree I Gun think, Club. I think the gun ranges north. are the only place where you should be able to carry a gun. Like, legit. Hmm. Like, a gun range. I've, I've shot at a gun range, and I'm like, this is fucking fun. It and is. I've shot like assault rifles at a gun range, but at a gun range, everything is super regulated. Everything is suit. There's like hardcore rules. They train you. They train you how to hold it, how to make sure it's pointed down so it doesn't accidentally go Discharge. off. And all that is great. I think that's all great. It's it's the fact that this kid on his 18th birthday strolled down and bought an AR-15. It's like all right. This is out of control. You should not know 18. Like if a 25 year old is not allowed to rent a car, why are we letting 18 year olds have assault rifles? Yeah. Well, they say your prefrontal cor cortex isn't fully formed. And that's essentially the reason you can't rent a car until you're 25. Oh, really? That, that's, yes. I mean, that's, your brain is physically not developed. Think to of make all the decisions. stupid shit but you did when you were 22. Well, Adam. yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. I think of shit I did when I was 22, 23. It's I'm all like, bad. I should have died so many times. But that's insurance companies going, right. no fucking way but are we going to But this is the ultimate this. insurance problem, isn't it? Yes, but here's the challenge to you Democrats. You want to lower the voting age. They do? Yes. Uh -oh. Yeah. That is so a challenge. You're right. How can you simultaneously say raise the gun age and let's get voting to six? Yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That is a good point. But I completely, if oh, I look, would rather I, have I, less I'd go people for just vote, picking an age, pick an age. I'd rather have 21. less people vote than than a younger age for owning assault rifles. I or really how about do. a catch weight? Why are we always stuck between 18 and 21? Yeah. 21's random. There's three years in there. How about 19 and a half? Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's like meet at a catch weight somewhere. Just go, look, drink, vote, join the military, mm -hmm. do it all at 19, 19 and, and six months. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
I know we somebody said twenty one, and we all just went, yeah, okay, Sounds well, twenty one. Well, what about eighteen? Well, random. it could be eighteen. We, we've not we've not examined any options. Twenty, by the way, yeah. feels like a nice round that, yeah. number. You're, it's your first year out of your teens. You're two years out of high school. Yeah, yeah. You're not a teenager. Yeah. Somebody hopped to twenty one, sort of. Randomly. It seems random. Yeah, Especially back in the day, weren't different states like you could drink at 18? Yes, and don't get me started on the age of consent. consent. I've been burned by (laughs) so many. I mean, I can't even count. Oh, my God. Plus, a comedian who travels. Male comedians are always bitching about the age of consent. It's fucking rough out there. I can't keep track of the states. They're the victims. (laughs) Partners, do you know? But in Nebraska, it's 14 and a half. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I thought we started on Hawaii. Helen makes a good yeah. point that we should just lower the age of consent. Is that what you said? Uh, that too, but also I think drinking and drugs, I don't think there should be an age. In Europe, you can drink. They, you know, there's no drinking age well, in Europe. Well, we saw it happen at Euro Disney. Because <laughs> yeah. culturally, the culture has signed off You want our kids eating potato-based churros? <laughs> is that what you're looking for, you communists? Helen, this is show is a disaster. I think I, if I wanted to get shit-faced at 10, I feel like I should have been able to. So that by the time I'm 20 and driving... I'm not getting shit faced because it's the first time I'm drinking, and then be like, I'm gonna go drive my car home now, which is exactly what I did when I was 20. Yeah. Because I was a fucking idiot, and I was just <gasps> getting rip roaring wasted. Like, I would go to K Town in my 20s in Koreatown and just sh- sh- get shit tanked, and then try and to just drive do karaoke home. all yeah. the Yes, of course. What was your me. drink over at K Town? Uh, vodka. Or tequila so with you, orange slices. If you're at the Naughty Bong, yes. yes. Oh my god, I spent a lot of yeah. Wow, mm-hmm. a lot of my best friends are all. Yep, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but the bars in Koreatown are so dangerous because um, there's they're not like bar where you get a drink. Like it's all it's mostly table service. Yeah, they bring over the bottle. So they bring over the bottle. Yeah, even if there's four of you, <laughs> often there's like a, a bottle minimum. Yeah. So you'll mm-hmm. be at a table with four friends and they bring a whole bottle of vodka and you're expected to finish it because you can't take it home. Do they the charge the you crazy amounts? Uh, crazy. Like 200 bucks a bottle, 300 bucks a bottle. And it's like Tito's or whatever. <laughs> right. It's for the experience. It's like right. Yeah. And then they bring you a fancy plate of fruit. That's why right. And they're is... like, this is why we're charging you 300 Look, I don't want to be a prude and I'm all for this. But? But why is bottle service legal? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what if you just went, hey, I'm just going to step behind the bar and pour myself a little highball over here. Here's 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. Like, they'd be like, get the fuck out of there. You're not allowed to come it over is, here yeah. and touch crazy. You're basically being shit. charged for sitting. Oh. We're That's dropping off a whole, I mean, I guess wine, for sure. You buy a bottle of wine. But when the alcohol content yeah. gets yeah. up into the it's 80 like proof. When you're doing bottle service, too, they charge you, like, um, they'll bring you the mixers. And the mixers are, like... Here's a car- a carafe of orange juice the for $200. <laughs> and wow. you're like, what is... Well, you're a pretty highfalutin when you were doing this as a 19-year-old. <laughs> I was, home. yeah. Well, you know. They you had know, bottle service friends. Back, back in the day? Yeah, because in Koreatown, there are no laws. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> That's what it says are. on their sign. Yeah, there are no laws. I did speak... They, like, When I was 21 in Koreatown, I never got checked for ID in Koreatown. Like, I went to bottle service clubs with four people, and they would make me drink a whole bottle of vodka. I mean, like, they, you would, uh, it was famous at 2 o'clock when all the bars closed and they kick you out, that cops would just hang out around Koreatown because they would just pull over. Like, odds are, the car you pull over is going to have a drunk driver. At 210, yeah. Exactly. I did get yelled at in a first class back when you turned left way back in the day for they had the champagne cart. They parked it right in front of the remember the big screen TV? Big screen. This is this is a trap. No, I don't remember. Tell me all well, about the big the first screen class TV thing. was like eh, twenty eight inches, but it was was, was this nineteen fifty two? It's like nineteen ninety seven or pre TVs in the seat. No TVs in the seat. They just had the yes. movie would yes. show on the screen I on remember, the bulkhead. I remember the tiny and ones. I don't remember that were the coach. champagne cart. Like now they just ask you what you want to drink and they bring it to you. Yeah, they they'd have a movie that would you know, they'd go, Your sure. in flight movie is Obviously this. A bigger, right. better one to first class. And they had the screen right. that everyone was watching right. just sort of centrally mounted on the bulkhead and they had that champagne cart la la. under there and I was sitting in the first seat 
And I was being ignored for like 20 <laughs> minutes. At some point, I got up just to pour myself. How dare you? I got the excuse you. Tackle you. This is not a self-serve bar. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so well, used to serving myself at bars. <laughs> <laughs> well, they bring the booze to your table, but I got yelled at. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, you can't go full Seinfeld. when The old days with the cart and the service. More anything? More anything. Everything. Yes. I don't do that anymore. But now you hear about behavior on planes and you're like, that was cute what you did. Like now, yeah. now, should like, be so now lucky. flight attendants are getting punched in the face, getting your teeth knocked. They out. gotta duct oh, tape yeah. people to their seats. I that was the most satisfying thing. <laughs> I saw that duct tape seat guy video and I was like, Yes, I'm just gonna carry duct tape around with me and just mm. like fucking tape motherfuckers. That first. could have been one of your prime farting targets. <laughs> you know? Oh my god, where's he gonna go? I know you don't do a lot of farting in coach, but we could make exceptions, I would right? Fart in that motherfucker's mouth. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I bet and he hold his nose. It. Yeah, <laughs> see if we can blow his eardrums out. <laughs> I don't know how it works. That was the little twat that was like, do you know how my parents are? They were worth $1.8 million. And everybody started cracking up because they were like, you're on Spirit Airlines, bro. (laughs) (laughs) 1.8 won't buy you a house in the valley. He said something really (laughs) funny, like $1.8 million. And everyone's like. (laughs) And then there's a guy who's getting punched by Mike Tyson. Yeah, he's he's fucking with him. Yeah. All right, Careful let's do there. one more. All right, let's find a good closer. Um, okay, so Brian, uh, no, 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 uh, Brian, th- never mind. This doesn't <laughs> what I said. specifically pertain to you. It is Pride Month. Uh, happy Pride Month. How dare month. you? <laughs> I'm just going to do a different story. <laughs> happy Pride, everybody. It's June. And many companies, of course, I'm sure Christy, Brian's wife, works in marketing, would have lo- a field day telling us how all these companies just scramble for this. You got you to gotta do something. They have to. They're clamoring to spend these extra advertising dollars appealing to the LGBTQ community. But as we see over and over again, they don't always get it right. And there's a great example out of Burger King Austria. <laughs> they unveiled the Pride Whopper. And so we'll go ahead and show you a picture. So I, I, I'll I'll try and investigate what I think their point was. One oh. burger comes with two oh, tops. Oh, that's good. Yeah. One burger comes oh, with two bottoms. Like and they Genius. said it's it's two equal buns, equality. That's what they meant. Mm. Uh, where the comedy, of course, comes in is every you know people are coming out saying first of all, two tops would never be together, and two bottoms would never be together. Mm. You know anything about the gay relationship? Um, so they're all taken to social media to say if you really want to help, stop getting these campaigns so wrong, and I don't know, underwrite an art, uh, you know, an artist or, or an innovator in the gay community, and. Instead of pandering with these They're ads that are artists, so ridiculous. Gina. Come on. Oh, I didn't realize I think that. They're made up of welders I primarily. I didn't realize that. Everyone well, no, no, no. Artist. I know one of them's a cop. I know one of oh, them's a cowboy. That's right. I know which one of them might be a. Yeah, there's, there's, there's an Indian. That's right. Like and a Native American. Native American. Right. It's literally a job, but. <laughs> I mean, I actually think a burger with two tops sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't sit. It wouldn't sit like that. It would be like leaned over. Yeah, you'd have to hold right? it because that's the whole bo- that's the whole point of the bottom bun is it's right. flat, so it can sit flat. Right, but two tops. But isn't now that I'm looking at them, I'm like, I would. You're right. I would rather have a top and a bottom. Yeah, because I don't know if traditional like, burger structure. There's something. There's so, not <laughs> you there's breeders. Like, yeah, yeah. With your there's fucking a, burger that's, configuration. That's so so close-minded. traditional. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, and that's the thing too. I'm Isn't so burger so anti queer because I don't want this stupid abomination burger. of a burger? <laughs> isn't Isn't Burger King like the have it your way people? They like, were. If, if I, I could, I think they abandoned that in '89 oh, or something. But okay. I don't know. I thought if, they still if I just it. wanted a Whopper with two bottoms, they'd have to give it to me anyway. Why does it have to be a pride? Hold month? the pickles, hold the lettuce. Special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us have it what? your way. What? Have it your way. I don't even know about have this. You was starved for entertainment have as a child. Your... I'm There's a song I'm on... by a gay guy. I'm on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> I have Asperger's. Adam. Wait, that's different than the two all beef patties, special that sauce, one lettuce, I know. cheese, pickles, Everyone knows offices. that, that one. one. I know. Yeah, I, I don't know I've never one. heard the song you just sang. Uh, we'll find. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You have a lovely singing voice. You should should join the voice. You should hear him sing Hell is for Children. Next time we go to K-Town and I grab the karaoke mic (laughs) and you're sitting at the Sitting and drinking half, yeah. you worked your way through half bottle of Tito's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and will then I'm going, do. And then I'm stumbling up and being like, "You suck." 
fuck? I will Whatever. do the Burger King Have It Your Way song from. You think they have that? 1980. I don't need it, baby. Oh, God. I do he that shit a cappella. do this shit a cappella. That's right. <laughs> Back when white families they used to eat fast food. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, and white people worked at the fast food. Right. Mm-hmm. Four Coca Cola. And would I have to wait long if you made one whopper with no pickle and no lettuce? <laughs> no, sir. Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce. Special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us have it your way. Oh, well, in that case, could I have the other whopper with extra ketchup? Sure. There's a packet. She's like <laughs> so excited about the Everything on top of any way you think is proper, have it your way. Now, by the way, it's, she's a vision. Yeah, she's gorgeous. It's not like I had the vinyl of this commercial. <laughs> I had to watch this commercial 1,800 you, times to commit this to memory, but that's how committed. You really knew it. Yeah. That's how committed I was to watching nothing TV yeah. my entire I, life. I just love that in every fast food commercial, the people behind the counter are literally the happiest people. They're like on ketamine. They're so just joyous to be alive. And if you actually go to a fast food. Oh, is it not like that? Like, have you, like, when is the last time you ever saw a McDonald's employee? being like, I'm loving it. Oh. <laughs> I'm loving it. No, they are the most miserable people. <laughs> Except, do you guys remember, I think it was the 80s. Oh my God, it's going to make me cry. Remember at the McDonald's commercial with the kid with Down syndrome working the counter and said like, all my life people have been helping me, helping me do this, helping me do this. And you now that I work song? with- <laughs> I'm retired. Oh, you, don't you haven't heard that one? I don't, I don't recall I can that. I the whole song. The- <laughs> and then at the end he goes- Hold the helmet, hold oh my, my hand. God. Where's the towel <laughs> I'm so sorry. Get getting off the that. can. Oh, yes. Yeah, they had and a whole song. I, d- I don't remember the song. Oh, yeah. But then at the end, he goes, finally, because I work at McDonald's, I can say, welcome to McDonald's. Can I help you? Oh, I kind of remember that It really got you in one. the heart. Did he enunciate as well as you're enunciating now? Brian. <laughs> we have that oh, one, too. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's see. Wow. Don't you guys remember What year is this from? My name's Mike. Oh. This is the story about me and my friends. This is Life Goes On. Like my mom, it's not she's a wonderful not mother. Corky. And my dad, he is a one cool dude. That's my teacher. He is the best. Is Can like you pause so it for a second? I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but oh whenever there's a depiction of a down syndrome guy playing hoops. No one really covers Guarding him. Guarding him, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no one's on like Gary Payton? Yeah. The glove? Show the man some respect and get up on him. <laughs> front of him tonight. He's going to try to go baseline. <laughs> Fucking close the door. It's, 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 it's going back door in your house. You're not doing anything. soft bigotry is what it is. They're you're always right, you're right. leaving the guy around. No. All right, you're sorry. Right. Go ahead. Adam. That's the teacher. Very brilliant. Outspoken. That's my friend Tracy. I think she's beautiful. Oh. This is so mm-hmm. sweet. Come on, let's take a ride to McDonald's. I kind of remember this one. I do kind of do. There's all my friends. You know, me and Dave are our best pals. We are a great team. Pie is up. Burger's up. Perfect. Ever since I was a little baby, people are always trying to help me. Bring it home, so Tina. now I love to say, welcome to McDonald's. Can yeah, I help you? I do remember this. Oh. 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 It's, right wow. Tina, you're so rich. Woo. That was it tough. Is. Yeah. Ooh, That's a good wow. commercial. It's a great commercial. I wow. like the spokes models better. Yeah. But well, I understand the, there's place that for was everybody. poignant. Yeah. All right. Do we bring it home? We'll do it right now. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Fuck y'all. I'm headed to coach. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right. Let me tell you last but not least about meter. Guys, grilling season is here. Time to Whoa. dust off the meter. I hope you got some uh, a charge on yours, Brian. Yeah, I turned it around. I flipped it, changed the battery. You know, it had been dormant for all winter. Now it's summertime. It's meter time. Steaks, ribs, chicken, the perfect tool if uh, you don't want to undercook or overcook your meat. you got to go with meat or sleek. Bluetooth meat thermometer that keeps an eye on your food and tells you when it's ready to come off the grill. There's a countdown, so you can head back into the house, have a cold one, watch the game, or even run out and make a run, man. You'll have all the info you need on your phone. This is uh, summer's upon us. 
it's grilling season. It's uh, when the hell's Father's Day? Is that coming up? It is in two, week, two weeks. Oh, great! Yeah. I love to be celebrated. <laughs> so you can use uh, use it a grill, smoker, oven, sous vide, uh, air fryer, rotisserie. It is meter, right, Dawson? Meter is the perfect tool to be used. Meter is the perfect tool to be a grill master and to buy for Father's Day if you haven't been shopping. Get 10% off with code ADAM when you shop at meter.com. That's 10% off. M-E-A-T-E-R.com with code ADAM. It's barbecue season. Get grilling with Meter. All right. You can go to amcurl.com. Come, show's coming up in Denver. That's at the uh, Comedy Works South, June 24th, 25th. Sonny will be working the merch table, so you can say hi to him. Uh, Anya Zova, she's got... Cobb's coming up on the 15th and Punchline in Sacramento on the 17th. <laughs> Helen Hong, the special Well Hong's available now on Amazon Prime and other streaming devices as well. Go Fact Yourself is the name of the podcast. Great to see you, Helen. Thank come, you so much. Come back anytime you like. Oh, Mike Dawson, the smoking kills at the Mint in Los Angeles. Tonight is you hear this. So watch Dawson perform in person. There's nothing better. Until next time, Adam Kroll for Helen Hong and Anya Zova and Gina Grad and Bob Bryan. Say it! Mahalo. Weddings where the dude's in a suit, but then he's wearing, like, flip-flops with the suit. I don't yeah, like that. that I don't like any precocious nine-year-olds wearing Wayfair sunglasses. Yeah. Like, oh, he's a bad dude, cool. you know? I, yeah. If your all... wedding's on the beach in Hawaii, flip-flop it up. Go crazy. Yeah. If you're at a fucking skate park getting married, fans <laughs> all day. Otherwise, right. show some goddamn respect. <laughs>